787. 787, departure for will be 157. 257, thanks. <clears throat> COVID. <laughs> now we're demonetized. <laughs> Welcome to Sci Fi and Friends Podcast. It's been a little bit of a while. Oh, you're right in my shot. I'll, I'll move. I'll put it over here. Oh, not too bad. Your shoulder, though. Oh, am I in your shot? I'm just that massive. Uh, give me the. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Okay, yeah. It's always hard to start these things. We're in a new studio. We're right above Bearded Lady Coffee. It's delicious coffee right underneath us, an entire coffee shop on Main Street in Joplin. It's like official. It's like a nice official. It's like a step up from doing it in just the random uh, room in your house versus like oh, we're in this creative commons. <laughs> we are part of a, a group of creative folk and we have 24 hour access. We can come here anytime. And honestly, like I was telling some people, it, it gives me more confidence because it, it, it feels more real, like I said. So like asking different, different, uh, different guests, like uh, more, oh, I, don't, I don't mean any disrespect to my previous guests, but you know, more like prestigious type of folks. Wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> like professors and stuff. I feel more comfortable asking them to come here. Like, hey, come oh, to the studio rather than like, here. come to my house. You know? <laughs> don't mind the dog. <laughs> yeah, don't mind the dog. That's my wife, you know. <laughs> I will say that like a lot of people enjoyed coming to the house. And that, like Dave, when he came over, he was like very thankful. Like, thank you for inviting me into the house. So Have a glass was, of wine afterwards or yeah. something if you wanted. Well, that was always fun because you didn't have to worry about anything. Now mm -hmm. it's like we have to get home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was, I mean, most of the times I think we'll just go to Whiskey Dicks. It's like literally right there. Oh. But, That's true. But anyway, so now we're in this new studio, which is very, you know, it, we're, I put a little work into it. Casey helped me get this uh, massive table up the stairs and through the doorway. And Peyton. Peyton did too. Next to impossible. Next to impossible. So as far as news as the podcast goes, new studio, uh, I'd like to do one or two a week. Probably one a week for a while until we get some momentum. And then I'd like to do two. Uh, I have one editor on board. So it's Austin Colonel. He's going to be doing some editing for me so we can pump out more of these podcasts. And uh, the list of guests continues to grow. So that is no problem. Getting, getting people on the show is no problem. There's a, mo most people are very willing to come on. So I appreciate that. Anyway, I hope you're all doing very well out there post-COVID, pre-COVID, pre -COVID, like well, post, what's in, what's, what's in between? Like halfway. Yeah, but like pre is before, post is after, like, What's the word for current current COVID? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Depends on where you live. If you're in Australia, you're definitely in the midst of it. If you're in Missouri, it's never really been taken that seriously. But anyway, natural immunity. Anyway, welcome back to Sci-Fi and Friends. Thank you for joining us this evening. My guest, my favorite person on earth. Ma, he shares half the genetics that I do. Brother from the same mother. Mr. Casey Seifert. Yes. Always enjoy having you come on. And obviously, I wanted to, you to come on today because we've got to work the kinks out. It's been a minute since we've done this. Yes. Well, it's always an honor. Thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be here four minutes and 20 seconds in. Oh, perfect timing. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. What do you think of the new place? I enjoy it. Uh, I did not enjoy moving this table. Uh, next to impossible is a matter of fact. Um, it was, I don't know. I, I was 98% to the point of giving up. I was oh, yeah. on the breaking point of this yeah. is, this will not work. Yep. There's not a situation where this table gets in here, um, it, as the current shape that it's in, but I did have a good geometry teacher in <laughs> high school. Shout out Bobby Martin. Shout out Bobby, Bobby Martin. And, um, I think it's because of that class mm. we were able to put our, strong minds together and we got it in here we did and i think it looks good we did it looks very good there's plenty of room still like even yes. for as massive as a table it is there's yes. still a lot of room mm -hmm. about the cabin and i guess really the cameras are only getting one side of it so you're missing right there's a whole other almost half the other room which is pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, over there, though, it's mostly storage. You know, like we got the tool chest and the light and stuff. And eventually, I'm going to build a little bar there for drinks and, yeah. you know, have waters and, and sodas. Of course, there's Mike 
uh, the producer yeah. is here. Shout out to Mike. And also my agent, Thanks, Mike. Tony. Well, Tony's out in the lobby. Is he out in the lobby? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not allowed. I, I, don't, I don't allow lawyers back here. <laughs> well, you know. I mean, he's he, cool. He's my guy. He's cool. He's my guy. He's okay. cutthroat. He's cutthroat. He, he keeps me on schedule. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're here. Yeah, we are here. And it feels good. The last podcast I did was with Alex Hill. Episode number, I believe it was 58. And that was in the that was in the old podcast studio, which is now my like main office. And uh, that was 2020. That was right around August, maybe 2020, something like that. And then... Jeez, it's been a while. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The main issues with the podcast were space. One was space. It's just, like you said, the table's big. This equipment, you know, I used to, I used to break this out for two days a week. Mm-hmm. I would take over the kitchen table. I would set it up on a Monday. I'd have a podcast, and then I would do one on Tuesday. After the podcast, I'd put it all away and then wait for the next Monday and do it again. Pain in the ass. And then finally, when I think when you moved out, there was the open bedroom. And so we, we moved things around, and I was like, can I make this a podcast studio? And she's like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. What was the office? Was it just a... What was the office? Uh, yeah, was it just a more shittier, rundown office? When you lived there, yeah, it was a dual. It was you and me office. Like I had one corner and you oh, had one corner. Oh shit! I remember playing Ark back to back. That <laughs> yeah. was like the beginning days of Ark. Oh yeah, okay. beginning days of Ark. We I were was both the... in school, so like we would do our homework and stuff like. I around. played on somebody's MacBook Pro or something. I remember playing. Maybe it was an iMac. I don't know. I, I played on Mac for a while. Huh? I, I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you did. I don't know. I think you played on your MacBook. Pro. I know, but I don't. I don't see how that's possible because it's been dead. <laughs> Low resolution or something. Well, well, it's been dead longer than that. I don't remember. It's been dead. For I just years. remember you had the big fifty-five inch TV for our monitors. We both had huge TVs, which was fucking awesome i don't know what i played yeah it was low res yeah for sure oh but i remember I, that office it had a, maybe it was my laptop i don't I, remember i, I, I do it remember it was low res because then you'd hop on my yes computer and be like what the fuck we hop on the beast mm-hmm. and then that was a whole new thing mm-hmm. and then rockwell was born yeah. and that was a whole new thing rockwell so yeah, yeah. well uh, well there's kathy which is intel based beast and then there's rockwell which is amd based beast both of them have the same graphics card and they're very similar. But coming in November, when the new iMac or when the new Mac Mini comes out, that's what I'm gonna get for Kelsey. Because that's all she needs, really. She's a designer. Mm-hmm. Like she's not really powering through mm-hmm. her stuff. So I'm gonna get her a Mac Mini, which is like, I don't know, a thousand bucks or something. And then I'm gonna combine I'm gonna Frankenstein Rockwell and Kathy and crisscross them and like see what parts can go with what, sell a couple of the parts, but mm-hmm. just make some fucking insane well, thing. maybe drop some parts my way then. Yeah, you can have. I mean, like I can't use the CPU, so you could have the CPU. I don't know what I need. I know I need, I, want, I want a graphics card, but I don't know what I need oh, yeah. for what I need. It's got 16 gig RAM, so it's like I don't know. Lance, That's probably what you should crank up a little bit. Well, Lance um, Benning yeah. talked to me one time. He explained it really well. I can't remember what he said at this point, but he explained the difference between like an editing what you need as an editor mm-hmm. in your RAM versus what is it, what a gamer needs mm-hmm. in a RAM. And I don't know. He explained it really well of like editors like more long term. Mm-hmm. Your I don't know. I don't. I don't want to butcher it, but it's like it showed me like oh that is what Beast is like best at like it yeah. edits like a beast like right, right it's built for that yeah versus i try to game and it's like man this is a pretty simple game you'd think it right. wouldn't like yeah it's not bad of course it's still playable and everything but i think of buying any over the shelf uh gaming system this is the argument for gaming systems you buy mm-hmm. it it works really mm-hmm. really well for mm-hmm. a really long time and does exactly what you need. you put the disc in Mm -hmm. you're there you're playing or download or whatever kids do these days what why why i don't understand that why why is a ps5 so superior like it's it's so much smaller it's much cheaper Mm -hmm. i I don't know if that's just because it's built i mean it it doesn't word process it doesn't web surf i guess it can but it can why why is like a pc it can stream yeah pc's more powerful more capable of doing other things it's more capable but why it I don't know. Is it more capable? Like, if a P- PS5 can surf the web, what what can it not do? Mm-hmm. Of course, like it can't open programs. Mm-hmm. So, like the it just runs one right thing, which is Steam. Like you run one gaming platform, I right? Guess. 
I don't know anymore. Like the like the PS3, old PS3 has Netflix capability and all that, like app capability. Mm-hmm. It's basically like a iPhone. But do you think if I bought the crazy graphics 3080, whatever, yeah. R, you know, RTX card, yes, and then bought a PS5 and played them side by side, yeah. like would the card stand out? Uh, double the price of what the PS5 hmm. is? I don't know. I bet you'd be able to tell a difference. You think the card would be running smoother, cleaner, better, I however so? I think you crank up the, yeah, crank up the detail hmm. and all that, you know, to a, to a higher level. I don't know. The PS5 is I think PS5 powerful. has a lot of uh, 4K at 60 that yeah. look really, I mean, like 4K at 60 is pretty gnarly, mm-hmm. it's just like stat or whatever, but I know there's computers that can, you know. Right eat that for lunch so i don't know if it oh, would be running sure. like 4k 120 or something i don't know something crazy 40 yeah i mean if it could if it's like okay no watch the difference here yeah. type of thing i don't know that'd be an awesome i would love to watch a video or but that's one someone do it. one fucking um uh thing yeah to a computer that cost one part to a computer that cost double the ps5 mm-hmm. much less the body and the cpu and the right, coolers right. and the you know, motherboard. It's like, that's one piece. Yeah. If you want a crazy one. Yeah. What gets me is the size. That blows my mind. PS5 is a console, right? Mm -hmm. It's like this big. A computer, Beast is big. Beast is in a Mm -hmm. big bodied case. And you got to have the CPU fans and you got to have the box fans and everything. Kathy's way, Kathy's in one of the biggest, biggest cases I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rockwell is same, actually the same, uh, similar case, very similar. But compared to a console, they're tiny. Yeah. And then on a console, I'm thinking to PS3, they got a fan like that big. Yeah. That's it. That's the only fan. Kathy has four fans. And, and for those listening who don't know what the hell we're talking about, oh, yeah. uh, Ice Beast, Kathy, and Rockwell are all built computers. You built yeah. them all. Yeah. And they just have their unique names as identifiers, and that's what we call them. And, right, right. Um, anyway, yeah. So I bought Ice Beast. Ice Beast is now in my possession. Yes. And uh, you still have the other two. Yes. And um, Kathy is nicknamed after the uh, the hotel downstream hotel manager because Caleb loved her so much. <laughs> her name. Do you remember her? Yeah, I yeah. remember interviewing Caleb her. Caleb loved her. He loved her so much that I made her. I made him interview her. Because he was like so in love with her, like the she, she was like the ice queen to him, or like uh, she she wasn't mean, but she was like she's a manager, like yeah. she's got that commanding, yeah. like I get shit done, and he just loved it. <laughs> he just loved it. So I made him interview her, and he just would not shut up and about her. So anyway, just when I built, him. yeah, I, he did help me. He he did help me build Kathy. So when we built Kathy, we that's what we named her. Nice, yeah, uh, very fitting. Um, also though, I, I'll look cause ice beast has kind of like a little window you can look into mm-hmm. or whatever. You mm-hmm. can see the guts. Mm-hmm. It's like, there is a lot of room mm-hmm. and it's four different parts or whatever. I don't understand how it works, but it's four mm-hmm. interchangeable parts and like upgrading or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whenever a PlayStation or an Xbox is like, they utilize the space. I feel yeah. like a lot better. It's Probably like, it's so. all the, just like a phone, I guess, you yeah. know, it's like, it's all there, but the design has to be a reasonable size but mm-hmm. from the picture i've never seen a p i don't i don't think i've seen a ps5 up close yet <laughs> but in the pictures it looks huge it yeah, looks it, like it's it a pretty look massive big. machine well it's the whole technological difficulty of the more the further we advance the more like power things take mm-hmm. the more transistors on a on a cpu or whatever but then you get in with like you run into physics things get too hot mm-hmm. things take too much energy and it's yeah, you have this equation of at some point you you do run into literally like the limits of physics yeah. with our technology. Uh, what I was typing PS5 internal PS5. I, I don't understand. Yeah, somebody. Did you see the kid? Oh, this is YouTube nowadays. There's a kid that fucking bought a PS5 or somehow got both the PS5 and Xbox uh-huh. and destroyed it. Like op- opened it up what? and it's like everybody's begging for one. Yeah. You know, it's been out for a Fucking couple months asshole. and he completely destroys it. And it's just for the sake of like destroying it. What? So he like beats with a baseball a white bat. Guy? White kid? He's an Asian kid. Asian kid? Yeah. Yeah. It's on YouTube. <laughs> it's It's pretty painful to watch, honestly. Just what? like, what? why would you do that? But also I, I get like the disgusting lust of it or I don't know what it is. That doesn't. <sighs> this. Yeah. 
Yeah, board, I think that's him. Four million ten months ago. Board smashing PS5. Do you think November twelfth? It came out. God, dude, this <laughs> guy. Mail. This guy pisses me off. He's got one point eight seven million subscribers. So he he did it to the new Xbox. He just, it's brand new. It just came out like a week ago. November 14th. It, I think it dropped in November of, wow. of last year. Some guy on YouTube. You, I mean, he's got 1.87 million followers. He's he bought several PS5. Oh, that's not his only one. No. Yeah. I'm trying to find where he destroys yeah, it. Well, there, there's a the controller. He just, <laughs> he destroys a controller. Look at that. I mean, the whole fucking thing. Such disrespect. Yes. It's brand new console. <laughs> this is. How is karma? I can't believe. I mean, that. just look start, how beautiful it is. Yeah, he starts small. Oh, <laughs> and then he's just just amps it up. Grabs a fridge. <laughs> oh my god can you imagine if you're the sony engineers and you're like you see this video yeah, you want to see the guts of one though yeah well i pull up that that one oh, okay you have a better one than this yeah an actual display of one that has still two, working two, oh it is <laughs> still working nice he talks about how much tougher the PS5 is than the Xbox, so that makes me happy. Nice. Oh, he's beating the shit out of it. Yeah, he is. And it's all snowy and wet and crap. <laughs> he needs better tools. Why is he throwing us mini fridge? <laughs> <at it? laughs> I mean, that thing's about bulletproof, the sides of it. He needs a sledgehammer. <laughs> he's just throwing it on the ground. Oh, there you go. Now he's got the sledgehammer. Good God. And he left. <laughs> I mean, this is like, this is what this guy does on YouTube. Oh, my God. This is, I've been thinking about this kind of stuff a lot lately. Because, it looks like he's pissing on it. Because um, I've been trying to figure out NFTs. Like, I get them, but I don't get them. Mm -hmm. And some days I get them more than other days. And some days I'm completely like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And so that, that kind of crap right there falls in the category of NFT craze. Cause it's like who in their right mind, like if you were 10 years old and like, listen, you're going to make a hundred thousand dollars off destroying a PS five. I mean, just thinking about that concept, like trying to grasp that concept, like what, what are you talking? I'm going to make money by filming myself breaking a PlayStation 5. Yeah, you're gonna make a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. it, it just falls in the category of NFT of like, you see this picture of an ape? It's part of like 10,000 other apes. Yeah, this is gonna be worth more than than real estate, like two or three houses put together. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense, but it does on some weird. It w my thought was, we've kind of forgotten how crazy life is because it's gotten so crazy that something crazy kind of comes up and we're like, oh, that's crazy. It's like, you forgot how crazy this already is. Like, yeah. it is already bonkers crazy. I was thinking about who in their right mind would have thought that they could make a living making music. Just like using your voice and making like noise with another thing, you can become ultra wealthy, like ultra or generationally wealthy. That's weird. When you get the masses behind you, I mean, that, I think about like politicians in the early days. It's like, I don't know how corrupt it gets, but it's like the followers. Yeah. The followers comes the money, however so. Because whether it be the ad stepping in and like, hey, right. say this right before you say this, and we'll give you 100 grand. Yeah. To, yeah. You know, it's like, right. wherever the followers are, 
the the money gets pushed in that direction or something. Well, yeah, it's like the focus. If you have a lot of focus, mm-hmm. if you have a lot of attention, mm-hmm. you're going to gather up a lot of resources because you have the atten- you command the attention. It's weird. Mean. Yeah, Katie Van Slyke, who I got to guide uh, in 2020, 2020, 2019. I don't remember. One of those years. Um, but she's got three. She's got three hundred some thousand on Instagram, which is where I followed her. 300 some thousand on TikTok now, over a million on Facebook. So she's like influencer mm-hmm. level, like serious influencer. Ever. So I got to talk to her for a while about that because that was like mainly my, you know, that was a big interest of mine. Of like, what's it like? You know, yeah. how'd you do it? Like, what do you do? And she had a lot of good insights in it. But she was saying how each post, she was like, yeah, each post back in the day, I was charging $50 like a post. Not each time, but like if it was geared towards a sponsor and she's like i had no idea how far i was underselling my hmm. myself yeah and that's when she had 300 some thousand followers so now it was up to 150 250 a post per whatever sponsorship it was so i mean that's just putting a photo or a little video on versus this guy on youtube who destroyed a ps5 and i don't know does it make you want to buy i guess it makes you want to buy one because it's tough Right. I, don't know. No, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that has a silver lining. I look at it and you kind of get to see because he he messes with the controller too. Yeah. And he says how much tougher this controller is than the Xbox controller is. Right. So it does like good because you don't want it to take a beating, mm-hmm. but also sometimes it tips over. Or sometimes it right. drops when you're moving it, or sometimes it's like it's kind of nice to know. This thing's been hit with a fridge with momentum <laughs> and it's still working. Like if you play Jacob Fry and Madden and you beat right. him, he's it, not the controller break. might hold up. Yeah. I don't he's super strong. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. But you just tear it in half. For how yeah, for how strong I, I've literally crushed P, those PS3 controllers. Mm-hmm. I've like crushed one in half. <laughs> Can like, you imagine? They're tiny. I mean they are small controllers, it's so I'm just, not bragging, but it's, it's just, like, I've been in pure rage and just <laughs> just slowly crunch what it in made half. You that mad? I don't know if it was racing. It might have been a racing game. Like you clipped the side if it well, turned. Sometimes those racing games I really I grew up on. I really like racing games. Yeah. And um yeah, I like cars too. But sometimes the race is so effing hard mm-hmm. that it is like you, you replay it three times because you have to race it so perfectly mm. to even win. And sometimes it's like neck and neck, and it's like here's my chance, mm-hmm. and then you fuck up. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It could have been Call of Duty as well. That was, that oh was, yeah, that'll that'll do it to you. Call, yeah, actually, might have been Call of Duty. Now that I think about it, I remember playing at Straight uh, Raid. Grandma Garings, Grandpa and Grandma Garings, uh, Need for Speed Blacklist. Mm-hmm. I remember like so Blacklist. You'd drive around the city and you'd find like the side missions. You'd get, like go find Johnny Johnny Torino or whatever, mm-hmm. and then he drives an orange Supra or whatever, whatever it was. No, like you'd drive around freestyle world, free Mm -hmm. world, and then you'd see this orange thing and you're like, oh shit. And you got to follow and flash your lights and everything. And then the whole thing would start. But I do remember one race and you beat it with no problem. I was like in tears. No, man. We started like, I'm going to fucking do it this time. I would go through the whole thing. I would know like, here comes the boost. Mm -hmm. Here's the shortcut. Right. Lose again. I'd just go restart. And they'd have to go through the like, you ain't gonna win this time, boy. You know, yeah. they go through all their stupid fucking yes. lines. Yeah. And you're just like, just get to the fucking it's horrible. Uh, I never beat the 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 dragon in the air on Final Fantasy. That's where I got stuck and never uh, never could get past dude, it. Dude, I'll tell you what though. I'll tell you what I did is I got to that same thing. I uh-huh. got there and I couldn't do it, couldn't do it forever. And finally it's like, you know what, I'm just gonna restart. Mm-hmm. And I restarted, mm-hmm. and then you know how the sphere grid works. Right. And then it's like when you get there, it's an appropriate yes. difficulty because yeah. your guys are leveled up appropriately. I was just – the sphere grid was so complicated for, for myself. I was just filling stuff in. I was like, that looks good. Yeah, I don't know. I was I just like no clicking idea. here, going back, whatever. But essentially it was like a like a playing board of your character's strengths and weaknesses. Kind and of. you get to choose like what turns on, what turns off. And it's just like ultra complicated, right? What, what app? Well, so then there's other settings you can do. It's not ultra complicated, but you can make it ultra complicated. So yeah. the simple way that we played mm-hmm. was kind of each player kind of has their path. Orin is strong. Mm-hmm. Lulu is magic. Mm-hmm. Titus is quick or whatever. Each player kind of had their strength. It's a sphere Th- grid guy. There's yeah. Oh dude. <laughs> if you ever replay this, you'll be here. But there's a way that you can change your setting to where, like, Orin could be the mage. Orin could have the strongest magic out of Mm. anybody. 
Kamari could be, you know, I don't know. Like you could mix and match completely and create completely custom characters with their own strengths mm. based on the strengths available type of thing. Interesting. Yeah. And so like Yuna could have the strongest team. Yeah, <laughs> it could right. be the strongest nine 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 nine. Being like, yeah, Kahoo. and Orin could have Yuna strength or whatever. Huh. But we played on the easy way, thank goodness, because the other one it looks insanely complicated. And then honestly, this will kind of ruin you if you ask me, because you start seeing like maxed out damage mm -hmm. to where the bosses are like over a million, and each each of your people do ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine damage. Oh wow! And you just like. It's it, just it, a math game at that yes, point. Yes, essentially it's just a math game. Like then he kills you, then you phoenix down. Or, you know, just you're maxed out on potions. Mm -hmm. You're maxed out on this, and it, it's almost like okay, I don't like. I like the grind on yeah. working your way up and stuff. Well, essentially that's what RPGs are, right? Our role playing games. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what that whole thing is. It's almost like Dungeons and Dragons digitized into a game, where it's here's the rules of the game. And I guess they're all based on math. You know, you you are fighting this opponent. Here's your attack. It has this many points. Takes this way from his health. It's all blah, points. Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, all points. I guess that's any game. And strengths though. and weaknesses. Like mm -hmm. you got to use your strengths. Um, yeah, I I would recommend replaying it if I were you. My regret on replaying it mm -hmm. was that I because I replayed it. I don't know, recently. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. You replayed the whole thing. I want to say on the PS3. Oh wow! When I had it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because um, it was on PS2, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I think I yes. did. Yeah, yeah I, I played it on PS3. Yeah. And um, But I, I didn't rush it, but I like was trying to beat it. You know, oh, and I yeah. wish I would have just slowed down and like done a little side mission here. Yeah. Done a little what like Play a little it, blitz ball. Yeah, place it, like take time for Blitzball, not worry about it's Blitzball's still really hard. Even with my brain and like the internet right there and the yeah. research, it's like I was still getting beat. Oh, wow. and, and to do like some of the, the legendary weapons, uh -huh. ones, remember the Thunder Zone? Uh -huh. Those lightning strikes, and like there's a whole thing behind that, like strategy, how to do that. To get Wakas, you have to play like at least 150 Blitzball games <gasps> in this tournament to oh even be eligible. Yeah. And then the, the the prizes randomize. So you just have to keep playing oh in my. these leagues. So 150 at least. At least 150 random. games. Could be and 151. Then, could and be then all of a sudden it shows 2000. up to where first place is Wakas, you know, whatever Blitzball. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, now you have a chance. And if you don't win this tournament, it goes back to randomized, and you you oh, know who knows when you're gonna see it again God. to get Walker's legendary. Like there was th shit like that. That's like I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna use my time right. and play a different game. Right. <laughs> I'm 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 not gonna grind that hard. That's unbelievable. I had no idea there was even legendary weapons. There's legendary. There's I think they call them celestial weapons or something. What? Yeah, and then because remember you got to get like the moon. Moon rock or moon phase or something. You got to remember moonstone, mm -hmm. something like you know. You got to get each character's moonstone, and you know that's a whole separate mission. Yeah, and you got to find the actual weapon. Then you got to take it to this place and present the moonstone and the weapon to merge. <laughs> for <laughs> dude, it, it gets crazy to where you can have long beaten the game, right? And you're still grinding. I mean, if you took time to do you know to like wait to finish the game mm -hmm. sin wouldn't even be fun because you'd hit him three times and he's gone oh, you know it's yeah. like it's more It'd fun <laughs> right to like use your aeons use right. everybody you know have everybody on overdrive going into the battle right. that's a lot more fun than hitting him three times and, right and the game over the, i mean bar none probably the greatest story video game story of all time now, Metal Gear Solid 3, the jungle one, Damn. pretty fucking awesome. Uh, but just just Final Fantasy X had that literal, like, fantasy. Like, mm. if there was a fantasy level game, like, they just nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole idea of sin. Like, what is this? He's going, like, this thing, this demon thing. I don't even know yeah. what you call it. Floating around and doing yeah. shit. The magic wasn't too much, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, non-existent. Like, mm -hmm. it's very balanced. I don't know. The whole world just felt real. The, yeah. the Machina and uh, Re Reiku, Reiku, Riku, Riku, sexy little thing. Uh, you know, I mean, like every character was cool. Uh, Kimari was cool, but just the idea of sin because it, it felt it felt uh, it felt like where you came from was this cyberpunk type 
society. You know, it almost felt like yeah. they weren't paying attention to anything. San Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Sanarchy ninety nine. <laughs> and then Sin comes in and wrecks the whole thing. Yeah. And then it kind of goes back to a. Well, it kind of goes forward into like a post-apocalyptic feel mm-hmm. where magic like re, uh, like arises and you have, remember Seymour? He was weird as hell. Seymour was a great character. Yeah. I, but God, such just such a good story. Like I never got tired of the story. Like I got caught up in the, the fights or whatever, but mm. the story itself, I just loved it. Dude. Well, now that you could do it. like your research and, and yeah. I enjoy starting a game and kind of having a side, whether it's YouTube or, you know, reading directions, you know, just like yeah. getting the full, because I hate. I, I don't know. Maybe Final Fantasy taught me that lesson of like, do it right, yeah. and you're gonna enjoy it so much more rather than get to this boss and you're super underpowered and like that boss in particular. It's not yeah. like you can go anywhere else and fight and like build up your character. You're right. on the ship, yeah. floating exactly, and you run up the stairs and go fight him. And that's it. <laughs> and you can't like train to get better. You know, you're not in the, you're not running around fighting fiends. No, I tried every kind of strategy like hasted everybody yeah. overpowered everybody i had max potions or whatever they were mm-hmm. like dude oh my god well because he'd he'd do a photon breath or whatever and then <laughs> you're all dead everybody's dead like yeah. nobody can withstand it yeah like, okay well if you take them all out at the same time yeah, yeah i'm gonna lose funny thought as you say that you said um if you played the game right like you have a more enjoyable time playing it in the sense of like if you play the game as the game creators intended kind of like as long as you stay within these boundaries mm-hmm. like you're, you'll you'll enjoy the game like mm-hmm. if you go off and do this shit like we did like you're gonna you get caught up somewhere it's it makes me think of life like are we is there a way to play life like is if you just play life in this way the way that life was intended to be played would you enjoy it more i don't think life's about being enjoyed though i think games are you know Mm -hmm. so then so then what would you say life's about (laughs) come on bro um ask god i don't know that's where where personal belief comes in like well yeah what what would casey seifert say at what are you 29 something like that (laughs) (laughs) yeah well at your current age and experience level and you know like what, what what would you say for what the what i think it was the purpose of life Nah, just, is that I, what I was? Wait, wait. I don't know. What you you said that life is not meant to be enjoyed. Well, no, you didn't say that. You said <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, I don't know what. How did you phrase that? I said something like uh, like life isn't necessarily right. meant to be enjoyed. Right. Like that's not the end goal. Like it's just to enjoy. Nobody said right. nobody. There's no not a factual structure in place that the only reason we're here is to enjoy ourselves. Yeah, that does get sold a lot. I think, I think like the yeah. greatest sacrifice is like a nun or something or a yeah. monk or right. any of those lanes is like the greatest sacrifice. They're living a miserable life. Don't let them tell you right. <laughs> that maybe they're like content, mm-hmm. but it, I would imagine as a human goes, it's pretty miserable. Mm. I don't know. Monks is like, it's indi- they're indifferent. They, we're not happy. We're not sad. You yeah. know, so it's They've like, accepted it. Yeah, they aren't. It's not like a regretful thing. Uh, at least they don't sell it that way. It, mm-hmm. It's, but they aren't enjoying it. Mm-hmm. But also, it's not the opposite. Like you, are you having a good time? No, not really. So you must be having a bad time. <laughs> oh right. It's like no, no, no. no. Yeah. I'm just not having a good time. Right. But I'm not having a bad time. It doesn't have to be the opposite. Right. Right. I I I I don't care for Biden. Oh, so you're for Trump? Right. No, yeah, I yeah. Didn't say, I argument. didn't say that shit. Right. Yeah. If it's not this, then it must be this. And like, there's a lot of gray in there yeah. where you can still, you know. That's weird. People do that a lot. They just they just knee jerk reaction. Mm-hmm. They hear one thing and it's like, yeah, I'm not having a good time. So you must be having a bad time. Mm-hmm. No, not necessarily. It just mean it just means I'm. The only thing I can state in this yeah. st- in this experience that I'm having is that I'm not having a good time. Right. <laughs> Wait, yeah, very interesting point of view. Um, what was I uh, come back thought? I had five hours of sleep last night. Three a.m., dude. Three a.m. I'm on. I'm in my office, and I just feel like God. Mm-hmm. I feel so good. I'm like, I feel like I'm 19 or something. Just energetic. Just. And- pure energy my mind's flowing and i'm like i'm not gonna go to bed this is great what i'm gonna do? ride this out oh dude i wrote for a long time i, I just kind of you know i tied my, tidied up my office a little bit here and there and i was just like i am going to pay for this but i felt so good hmm. and then i paid for it i woke up and 
Yeah. I feel like you have those sometimes. I have no idea. I honestly think it came from the overcoming of jujitsu. Yeah. I really think that like, you know, I don't know if I conquered a demon or if I like cleared the way of bad juju or whatever. I don't know what it was. Something came off of me Mm -hmm. and I just had this huge boost of like, oh my God, it feels great to have that off my back. I think that's what it was. Or is that kale salad that I had? I don't know. I have a few uh, highs that I'm like, man, I... Why would I go to bed on this? Yeah. I would much rather, I'm enjoying it so much, and it's like, yeah, whatever the, the time and space is that you like, mm-hmm. it's way more fun to ride it out than to like, well, let's be responsible. And Well, that's what I thought, you know, because walk, I was walking back and forth because I need to take a shower after jiu-jitsu. And I was like, shower bed is where mm-hmm. this is all headed. Mm-hmm. Kelsey was very tired. She she got in bed pretty early, and she had she's got something wrong with her face, kind of swollen up right now. So she was just like, I want to go to bed. I'm thinking, part of me, is, like you said, part of me is be responsible. We get up, we go to bed on time, we get up early. You know? <laughs> part of me is like, why? Mm. Why? I'm going to wake up tired. Right now I feel great. So why don't I take advantage of, of right now and, you know, do some work? And I did. I, mean, I that, thought I did some good work. That is, you know, minus the work, that is kind of every drunk's. Uh, mentality of like <laughs> I'm having a good time. Why would I want to leave <laughs> yeah. right now, honey? Yeah. No, I, I'm staying. Right. I'm staying. I'm ap- I mean, when I'm ready to leave, I'll leave. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Every drunk's argument, <laughs> right? I know the consequences that are inevitable. I will coming. deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> right. I know I'll have a headache tomorrow. Oh, I'll deal with it. Oh God, I feel like shit. <laughs> I told you not to drink. <laughs> I'm never drinking again. <laughs> No, it it, it kind of comes down for me. It comes down to well, I've chosen to leave this. You know, uh, um, uh, uh, what is the word? I'm going to say unprecedented, but it's not unprecedented. It's like uh, uncommon, I guess. Like it, I've ch- kind of chosen to to lead a little bit different lifestyle compared to the average person. Oh, staying up and whatnot. Well, I have that choice. Of yeah. Like, most people would be like, I got to get up in the morning because my my work time starts at this time, mm-hmm. and to me. The kind of the lifestyle that I'm in, it's I can do work anytime. Yeah. So here I am. I'm firing it at five thousand. Why not do it now? Like why not do mm. stuff right now? And then in the morning, which inevitably I woke up and I felt like dog shit, pretty tired, groggy. There still might be an argument to be made of whatever your schedule is, regardless. Like yeah. once you get a a wind of that, like take that small bit of momentum and run with it and see mm-hmm. how far you get because. Sometimes you're on the couch and it's like, man, I like my body wants to go and move. Mm-hmm. Like a run sounds good right now. Yeah. But the couch feels good. Yeah. It's like take that little bit of yeah. a run literally feels good right now and go do it and let it carry you. Cause then, you know, you worked out or you ran or whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. versus like, yeah, the couch is comfy. Well, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a balance between staying disciplined all the time. Right. You had like this. This is the first week. I have, Unmitigated. <laughs> good. Uh, this is the first week that I've literally kept a schedule almost down to the hour, almost down to the hour. And this is the third day. It feels it's just the longest week I've had in a long time because yeah. I've done so much. Like mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've, I feel like my days are so full just because I've literally written down, said, this is what you're going to do at this time. After that, you're going to do this. After that, you have like a window of free time to figure out if you have anything else to do. You're going to watch the game after the game. You know that. I mean, it's down to that. And p- partly because I'm learning how to t- how to keep a schedule. Mm-hmm. But it kind of comes down to the whole keep a schedule always or keep be disciplined always as best you can. So that when those gusts of motivation and energy do arise, you can take advantage of them, but you don't rely on them. Oh yeah, you know. So it's like, like you said, you're on the couch, you're laying around, you're, you're you don't want to go work out, but the disciplined Casey says, "No, you're gonna go. You're gonna go squat." I know you don't want to, but you're going to. It's on the schedule. You said at five thirty, you're gonna be under the squat bar. You better be under the squat bar, or you kind of lose. You kind of disrespect. You could lose respect for yourself, in in the uh, grand scheme of things. But some days, and I think these become more common as you become more disciplined you're under the squat bar at five because you're just so hyped. Mm. You're just like, I just feel good. I feel good about staying disciplined. I feel good about how I look and I'm, I'm, I'm going right now. I'm going to get an extra 30 minutes or whatever, you know? mm-hmm. but your underlying foundation is that discipline. 
whether you want to or you don't want to. Also, in the creative arts, and I th- this is like a dilemma with the creative people because so many times creativity, like creative jobs or whatever, they get thrown around with almost, um, they almost get associated with laziness. Mm-hmm. Like we're just, gonna, we're just gonna lay around and fucking throw paint at the wall and that's gonna be art. Or mm-hmm. I'm a writer, uh, I'm gonna go to the coffee shop. You know, like, oh. And uh, I think a lot of people fall into that trap that want to be creatives. I think I fall into that trap sometimes that you want to be this creative person and you don't understand how incredibly disciplined that you have to be to be creative. I don't know. I know some creatives that aren't disciplined, weren't disciplined mm-hmm. and maybe now are dead, but <laughs> <laughs> that didn't turn out good. Um, I guess we're all dead. But... Just saying though, it's like just do the thing though. Right. That's all you got to do. If you're lazy about it and mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think there's that many. There probably is. Uh, like one hit wonders in the art world. Yeah. Like to make even like a game or something, it's really, really complicated. You need a team yeah. of people that work really, really hard type of thing. But if you're, I don't know. Cause it didn't, wasn't it Picasso that had like, he had so many paintings that to do the math, it mm-hmm. was like 300 paintings per day or something. Mm-hmm. It was just like, the math doesn't add up for how many paintings <laughs> yeah, he had right. and for how old it's like this dude had to be painting so all, all the time day and night yes so like I don't know who I don't know um, I've heard Jordan Pearson talk about that but I'm sh- like Chris Ryan he's not a genius or whatever not a not a super creative yeah but he's lazy he admits yeah. how lazy he is oh, yeah. but he's still a brilliant you know mind or whatever yeah that's true I think I I think I'm sp- well okay I I see I see where this is going. I <laughs> I'm speaking more of they will these people these <laughs> people <laughs> they will uh, f- they will kind of fantasize about being a creative without oh, doing the work. Everybody does, right? Right. It's like the but, coolest. Stuff. Um, Chris genius. Chris Ryan, Dr. Chris Ryan, he's disciplined. Because he actually writes his books, you know, whether he writes every day like a disciplined writer would, or if he writes when he feels like it. Yes, he, he creates books. He does podcasts. That or takes discipline. You can see it like sometimes it, you know, I'll get an email or something. You can see in his <laughs> typing that's yeah. like, I didn't want to get around to doing this. I know I need to, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever. To like his Patreon or something. And it's like, I don't like... I don't know. Brogan talks about it too. You talk about one of the most disciplined persons that you know or whatever yeah. that you have heard of. Rogan is like, he talks about, he doesn't want to do it all the time, Yeah, but he does it. Right. So like, take your feelings out of it. Sorry. That, that was my point of, of the, if you have the foundation of the, of the discipline, then you can catch those moments where you feel fucking great. Well, and they're, they don't show up that often. You need honestly. some executive control. Right. I think. When you take executive control of your physical body and like, I am standing up, I am going to the door, you know, like literally make it happen versus like, I don't feel like it. No, no, no. (laughs) I don't care how you feel. No. Adam told me a cool story one time. He either told me or he told me in a sermon. (laughs) (laughs) Told, told, Told it in a sermon. But it was his friend and they were at like some sort of college when he was at the college uh, that he was teaching at, there was like some sort of gathering and they had a punch bowl, like a spiked punch bowl or whatever for this gathering. And Adam was like, would you like some punch or whatever? And the guy's like, nope, I'm not allowing myself to have that tonight. Like for just because he's like, yep, my body wants it, but just, just as an <laughs> exercise, I'm going to not allow myself to have it. And it was like, it was cool because it was just a random moment of not tonight because I'm in control, not mm-hmm. you. I know you really want that. And it's, it's a small sacrifice, but it's also like, I want a little bit of punch, you know? I go to like, I'm going to be, I, I can wake up dead tomorrow, you know? I'm going to enjoy my punch tonight, <laughs> which of course is, <laughs> I, I think the worst advice is live like you're dying or whatever, yeah. you know, it's like. What, YOLO? Well, no, live like you're dying. You think that's the worst advice? I think it's not good advice. Well, you just said that that's how you would live. Right? I'm just, Didn't I mean. Didn't you say that? You can be argument to anything. Like, yeah. As far as uh, that oh, was totally I mean, true. I think that's good to see it from all sides. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, uh, yes, I see the the exercise and discipline from the dude. I see you you might be dead tomorrow, so why not enjoy your punch tonight? Mm-hmm. But then that led me to live like you're dying, to where it's like 
I would be chugging the whole punch bowl, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm not dying. Right. So I'll enjoy my cup because right. I could be dead right. tomorrow rather than this guy flexing discipline on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want any punch? I thought it was cool. Just like randomly picks cool. a, picked like a thing of like. I'm just hating on him because it's like, I wouldn't do that. I would be drinking the punch well, like a up, weak bitch, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> you, you bring up a great point, And the point that you bring up is that there are so many facets to the truth. Because they all they all kind of have a percentage of truth in them. Mm. Whether it's like live like you're dying because yeah tomorrow fucking car wreck and you are dead. Good thing you drank the punch. Good thing you made love to your wife. Good thing you did this or that or whatever. Or like dad, I've heard dad say this like you're probably gonna live to forty if you're lucky. So take care of your body. Like don't be smoking or or don't be hard on your body. Don't be like working hard jobs where you're not wearing proper equipment on your ears or, <laughs> or your face or whatever pretend you're going to make it to 40 because a lot of people do and they're yeah. like oh i wish i would have taken care of myself both have equal amounts of truth both play out differently in different people's lives one's even the uh, the black belt argument is like you're going to be somewhere in 10 years right why not be a black belt it's like what oh i like i don't know maybe, maybe that's a getting older thing but yeah. i can now visualize myself at 35 like that's a reality out mm, there mm-hmm, you know like mm-hmm. that's an age that i'll probably hit like if yeah. everything goes okay <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> i'll probably hit yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna plan on it yeah right. i guess that's it that's kind of what dad was getting at. i was like plan on it right because you're gonna be 40 someday so why wouldn't you want to be there's a great picture that's like some pasty white dude big old gut gross and then some tanned ripped guy and it's like same age different yeah. life choices or whatever oh, yeah. it's like yeah. not that i need to be ripped and all that but also it's like watch like this is years of neglect right versus this is years of consistency mm-hmm. that, that's all it is and it's like which one would you rather be mm-hmm. but also you don't have to be you know totally ripped because i like to eat food so yeah. i don't ever plan to be ripped <laughs> but I would like to be healthy. Yeah. No, I totally get that. I totally get that. It's it's a balance, you know. Uh, I don't smoke that often. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but when I do, it's usually for an occasion. Last time I smoked was Tucker's wedding. Yeah. We all went outside. He, the, the guy came up to me and the other groomsmen and handed a hand-picked cigar that he had picked for us. Mm-hmm. I smoked it. Yeah. And I smoked his because uh, <laughs> he didn't like it. <laughs> but... I didn't, I don't smoke a lot, but these events, these sorts of like occasions. And so it's almost like a balance, you know, if I never smoked at all, would that be best for me? Yeah, that'd be, that would be best Mm -hmm. most likely. But also once we're dead, we're fucking dead. Yeah. So I I really don't want to bring upon my death any sooner than it has to show up. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, like you said, we we have to get enjoyment in some way, you know. You have way. to enjoy the moment because literally it could be taken. Then it could be taken away from you like that. It's almost an arc reference in that. Some one of the some good advice I got on PvP. I mean, so your dino levels up and mm-hmm. you can change its settings or you know upgrade it. And I used to do the health some. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys was like, "Dude, if it's gonna die, it's gonna die by like overkill." Mm-hmm. So. Don't worry about the health. You might as well uh, mess with like the good stats, like stats you're gonna use. Right. Because like if a wyvern flies by, no, <laughs> fifty points in health isn't gonna do anything. Right. Type right. of mentality. True. And uh, that's kind of the same of like, probably like when you're dead, you're dead. Mm-hmm. It's 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 done for. And yes. Years of neglect can catch up on you, but surely the occasional, <laughs> yes. you know, just most of it's good. Had a rough night here. Most right. of it, you know, gets back on the train of good and not just the piling up of, right. of uh, you know, you run a car too much. Like, look how gunked up it gets yeah. type of thing. I don't know. Yeah. When you said that, it kind of made me think. It's it's almost as if you choose when to do these things. These these um these actions of neglect or these actions these negative actions. I don't know what you call them, right? So you choose them. So if you have years of neglect and you're smoking and you're eating Doritos and you don't do shit and you're depressed and all this crap and you don't address these problems, it's it's almost like that's almost the uh, the definition of sin. Missing the mark, like you're missing the mark on your life. Like you're not you're not meant to be doing this. 
But in the other sense, if you're living your life in this way that fits you, I think it says, uh, live a life worthy of your calling in the Bible. I don't know where it says that <laughs> or if it even says that it's kind of says something like that, you know, but live a life worthy of your calling. So I think you get to, I get to choose like what's, you know, like Jordan Pearson says, like what's worth suffering for you. You pick that thing. That's like, you, you can't not suffer. Mm-hmm. You just get to pick it. Mm-hmm. And if you're, if you really aren't careful, someone gets to pick it for you. And it's, it's suff- The suffering increases dramatically, but in the sense of, if you're just neglecting your health and your, your duties and your responsibility and life in general, it's almost sin. You're like, you're almost, you are sinning against yourself. But if you are living a life that you deem worthy of, of what you're doing, of your calling, and it has a couple benders, night benders, where you have a blast with your friends, or you have a wonderful getaway with your wife or, or significant other or whatever, or the moment, these moments that, yeah, that probably wasn't the greatest for my health or whatever, but how much joy that you got from mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? So it's not it's not the same. Like, oh, I'm over here doing all this bad shit. But it's not in the same mindset. It's not in the same energy. But it does produce the same result in some way. But, yeah. Well, what What's the only vice that's like could be considered beneficial? Because I hear a glass of whiskey... <laughs> isn't that bad just right. like a glass of wine it's like oh that could actually have yeah. positive effects <laughs> if you treat it carefully well we're all dead we're all dying right as soon as you're born you're dying but maybe correct? okay so like maybe the cigarette what, what every cigarette takes off like seven hours or something hmm. I, I don't know something can, like that when can i pick like what seven hours come off i mean that would be nice but um I don't know. I don't buy that because, yeah, the eighty-year-old smoker isn't that common. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't know. I feel like it affects more of quality of life mm-hmm. versus um, dying early. Which, like, yeah, you are going to die early statistically. Right. But also, I, I don't know. I smoked for a while, and it was like. It was the out of breath that got me. Mm. Just out of breath all the time. Mm. I was like, this is not okay. Mm. And I was even working out still. You know, I was yeah. like, still working out or whatever. But I could tell. Is that outside? Yeah. But I could definitely tell. I don't know. I, I would like to think that it's everybody that gets to the finish line and looks back on smoking or chewing or nicotine in this case is like, I should have never picked it up. You know, never should have started. Right. But That's what know. you hear most of the time. That's what you hear most of the time. Or when they're on oxygen or, you know. It's anything anything that has delayed consequences, almost always, if it's negative, the people look back and they say, I wish I would have never done that. No. Positive consequences, if it's long-term positive consequences, everyone looks back and says, Thank God I started when I did, and now I'm reaping the rewards. That's uh, delayed gratification. I've mm-hmm. never, never heard of delayed consequences, but that's a good, that's that's what a good it terminology. Is. Well, it's the reverse of delayed gratification. It's instant mm-hmm. gratification leads to long-term consequent. Long-term could lead to long-term negative consequences. Essentially, and this, yeah. essentially with the that's smoking. Like, that's like the whole life trade-off, though. Is it, like the more you wait, the more you delay your gratification, the better. The marshmallow experiment, all like it's but, all of it. But you make a good point earlier. Is like you delay too much, you fucking die, and you don't get any marshmallows because you waited too long. You yeah. know what I mean? Like like the punch bowl. Like yeah, I get. Mm. The point was it was kind of cool because he was denying his flesh. Mm-hmm. Great, love it. Great exercise. Do it. <laughs> you should do it. We should all do it. But at the same time, you brought up the thing of like, what if he drove home that night and dies? Like, okay, it's just punch. But the point that you that you're bringing up is too much delayed gratification, and you don't get any gratification because no. you delayed it the whole fucking time. That's kind of what our generation has done with, and not even by our own choices. Kind of the societal mores have kind of forced it upon us in a lot of ways. But buying a house, people just put off buying a house. Getting married, having I put off having kids because of uh, financial setbacks or whatever, or societal chaos, I guess, you know, but it's not a welcoming environment. Not at all. It doesn't feel like, oh, I'm going to bring kids into this world anyway. But my point, my, my whole 
point about that is we, we, you delay so much that you miss the gratification at some point. Like the, it's like the bell curve. It's like, hey, I don't want to get married. I just want to have fun. I just want to blast, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. If, and, and there's many people that just that do that, and it works out great. But if, they, if you have it in you and you kind of want to go down that road, sometimes they just they delay it so often. It's like, oh, we've been living together for 10 years, and we're not married, but we kind of are. It's like, why don't you just, why don't you just fucking do it? Why don't you just go through this ceremony? Why don't you just go? Why don't you? Why don't you get the treasure from this thing? Go ahead and do it. So much of it's delayed. It's it's not delayed gratification. It's literally like it's just delayed, per, delayed. Yeah, it's just delayed for fear or, well, I don't know, stupidity, ignorance. I'm not sure. But yeah, we millennials seem to have put in Gen Z too. But like I said, they had COVID to deal with. They yeah. literally like. Get in your house and shut up. So are you saying that there is a uh, time and um, distance in a relationship where you should be married or else? You said we've been together 10 years, but we still aren't married. Well, I, in that sense, it's like, why not just get married? I think it's, I think for me, getting married was super powerful. What if they still aren't sure? That's what I'm. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> After ten years, exactly. I'm not really sure. Exactly. <laughs> Quit fucking being a pussy and do and choose. Make a choice. So you are saying make a choice. Yeah, totally. At some not point, not date till you die. No, no, <laughs> and, and no, don't. I mean, I wouldn't. You do whatever you guys want, but I feel like, I feel like initiating a choice and making a decision. One that you make, hopefully, and well, not someone what else. What if the decision you make is to continue dating? That's fine. As long as you make, if you consciously make that decision, I feel like that's the, that's the key. doesn't matter what you make, but as long as you're not just like, not, uh, not, um, dealing with what's going on, we're just going to kind of keep doing our thing. We're just going to keep living because I don't want to make him mad if I bring up marriage. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> sounds super healthy relationship to start with. It's terrible. It's terrible. Well, the rest of I'm thinking beat of. me again. If I say the M word, <laughs> do you want some m- more <laughs> mayonnaise? <laughs> no, but just make a decision. Just, and if you do, that's one thing I really val- uh, admire about Adam is when I asked him about like, when did, have you ever thought that the life that you're living as a Christian, as a pastor, is just a wasted one because this religion is fake or what, wrong or whatever. And, you know, he'll say, yeah, I've thought about that a lot. But when I made the decision at age, whatever age he was, when he was like, I'm going to follow Christ, the decision was made where it's just, bam, now from from here on out, I've made this decision. Yeah, so, okay, I, when do you update, though? Because I've heard the same man say something about making kid decisions. Well, I made the decision. Yeah. Like, well, you were a kid. So do you, do you revisit the decision and remake it, you know? I would think so. Versus I think it would be healthy to do that. It's, it's like changing your mind on something. Like, well, I was input with new information. Yeah. So why would I still think this old information is accurate? I'm going to yeah. update. And I gave my life to God at 18. And then 10 years later, it's like, well, I, you know, how does that work? What if you yeah. still, what if you don't believe anymore? What, what if you still do? I don't know. Yeah, no, great point. I think you have to revisit. You have to revisit your your choices and your thoughts and your beliefs. How often? It's up to you, I guess. Depends on how much they alter your life. I feel if you let it get too far, it, it makes you blind. You know, you're blinded by mm-hmm. I made this decision. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, you look at the other side. You'd be so much better off. Mm-hmm. Whether it's with this girl or I don't know with his cars. Like oh, I thought I wanted a truck. I needed. <laughs> I don't. You know, I don't know. With like the some, Christian, with the Christian, with with Adam, it's it's more of like. It, it's been good to him overall, his life and what he's done. And he's affected a lot of people um, for him to, I think he's ran the simulations on the other simulations. I think he's ran them through his mind. He, when we talked and he, we were talking about like what I was going to do with my life, you know, I, I said something about, yeah, I kind of thought, kind of think I'd like to be a doctor like, like dad was, you know, and he's like, do you like sick people? I was like, not necessarily mm-hmm. you know he could render it down mm-hmm. to the basis of like well that's kind of what that life is going to be right he, he said something about it's uh, like the doctor commercials all, mm-hmm. all the healthy beautiful people in the doctor's office like <laughs> that's, that's not who goes to the doctor's no, office not at all i do find 
like solace in knowing that every reality is false. Like, so when I went to Hollywood, my idea of Hollywood, you know, was mm. streets of gold. And Shattered. <laughs> oh, well, it was. Yeah, it was when I went. But I came in with this, like, Wizard of Oz, like, oh, we're going to go see Oz, and mm -hmm. all this is going to happen. And it's like, whoa, bum smells like piss. Yeah. There's dirt everywhere. Rent's Everyone's crazy fake. Expensive. Yeah, rent, uh, yeah, rent's crazy expensive. There's traffic. Like, all this bad. All, it was, it, actually, I, I, I was going to say, all this bad came in. It's not bad. All the real <laughs> came yeah. in. All the real showed up, and it was like, this is not how I expected. And then I came home the first time, and I talked to Nick Smith. Nick Smith had the exact same experience except with the Navy. He got talked into going to the Navy or whatever. You're going to be part of an elite <laughs> group of people. And he was like, okay, this sounds yeah. good. It's going to give my life purpose. Hmm. He gets there. It's a bunch of, <laughs> and this is just Nick telling me, right? I'm not talking shit on the Navy guys or military, but he's just like the military is made of people. People are broken. They are flawed. They are, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's what he came into contact with superior f people that didn't know how to lead very well or weren't qualified for what they were doing or what, you know, just, just coming into contact with assholes, inefficiency, all that kind of stuff. His image of, of what he thought was going to be this great, like prestigious, not saying it's not because Hollywood same was like, not saying it's like, not th that, that thing that I took there isn't there. Cause it is, it's just, it's just like a pornographic image. It, it just shows you the good stuff and leaves out all the bad. Mm -hmm. That's that's what most people... I actually had a... Uh, I've never seen porn. What? I've never seen a pornographic well, image. Well, I, <laughs> I actually had a, a, a thought the other day, driving home from the gym, and uh, it was like... It was along the lines of... The title of my little article that I wrote in my phone was called It's All Porn. It's all porn in the sense of every commercial is porn because it's porn in the sense of leaving out the bad, leaving out the real, rendering it down to just even with the, the girls. <laughs> I mean, it's have you what? seen any burger commercials? Usually, there's tits. Oh no, no. So when I say porn, I'm not. I know. I, I don't know. mean the sexual. But I'm but, saying, but that's also true. Also, the real like, sex it's sells, baby. Pretty close to real porn. Sex you're imagining what this person looks like naked. As we are literally watching one the step away. Lawnmower yeah. be sold or something. <laughs> Bad <laughs> boy lawnmower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just bouncing on this. I'll lawnmower. take one of those. <laughs> uh, the dad joke. Does she come with it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> My lady didn't come with it. Oh, dang it. That cost extra. <laughs> no, not, not in the physically sexual part of it, yeah. but, but porn and, and maybe um, carnal is a better word. I don't know. But the whole thing, every commercial you see is rendered down to the perfect house, the perfect outfit, the perfect product or whatever. Every career path that you take, it's always presented. You ever seen a fucking commercial for the military? They're oh, awesome. Yeah, they are awesome. They're awesome. The one where he, he rams through a screen. I, I haven't a, seen that the, one. Yeah, you have. It, oh. There's a kid, he's in the street, and then this like cell phone screen comes up in front of him, and it's like digital him. He's making all these goofy faces, and he's looking at it like fucking oh, pissed. Yeah. Right. And it's something like, you know, the future so, be something in. about society doesn't give it to you. And he like just barrel rolls through it and that transitions into him like in boot camp oh, yeah, and shit right. so oh it's awesome genius I, I said if i saw this at 18 <laughs> like that might make me want to right do it yeah it's great i don't know what would have happened if i would have had access to tim kennedy and jocko yeah and, and those jocko, guys at that age and how they talk about it and obviously my eye holds me back a lot like they uh I never applied for the military, but the guy I talked to, he did mention the eye. Like, yeah, that's not going to be good. Mm. So that kind of sucks. But yeah, if I had access to those guys at a young age, I don't, I don't, I feel like I could have given four years or, you yeah. know, whatever it is. It's pretty stupid at 18. I would, I know. Yeah, I know. Real stupid. And then it, I, I just feel like the plan would have been closer to like, let them pay for it. Mm -hmm. I'll live wherever. Mm -hmm. I'll get a good quality education. Mm -hmm. I'll run laps, whatever, you know, like going to go overseas, actually take an interest in the options yeah. there. Cause every time the recruiter was there, it was just like, Nope. Yeah. I keep never walking. 
It uh, was. There's no chance you're not the, looking for me. No. The same <laughs> way that you thought there was no uh, other path besides college, that's how I thought about the recruitment. Like, why even? I'm not even going to look in that direction. Right. I'm not going to know. Right. I never even considered going to the When military. instead, I put four years in anyway. Yeah. Came out with massive debt. <laughs> yeah. You know, terrible mistakes. <laughs> right. I, Liver damage. You could have actually came out with money, mm. zero debt. Yeah. I don't know, discipline. Like, sometimes I do. I'll look at, like, NFL players. Like, mm. man, if I could be there or whatever, you know, like, doing some crazy dream. Mm -hmm. But also, I, I have to be thankful for, like, your brain developed in a certain way. True. And I kind of like how it developed. And, like, those NFL players say, they didn't get that chance. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't get those late nights, those developmental times. It was like... Now Practice. you're here. Now you're eating in the lunchroom. You're with your. It's just football, 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 football. Here's your and packet. Like, yeah. So sometimes, I don't know. It's I try not to judge like an older generation, um, taking time for themselves to where it's like you didn't do that yet. Like no, they were working their ass off, doing like doing something that took up most of their time or whatever. Mm -hmm. To where like I literally I studied psychology, so I thought about a lot of these things and like yeah. lived alone and and thought about a lot of these things. To where it's like, oh, okay, you shouldn't be so judgmental on it. Right. Like, these are still grown people um, with grown minds, but also it's like, you didn't take time for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you're too busy doing other shit. Right. Well, we've talked about that with our own parents and then just people of that age with, with podcasts alone. Like, they didn't have podcasts. Yeah. If there's one thing, that has changed my life drastically, it podcast is going to be on the list. Mm -hmm. It's going to be high up on the list because just like we've talked about it's, I've literally spent thousands of hours with Joe Rogan mm -hmm. and his guests. And then from his podcast, Sam Harris, Jordan Peterson, Jocko willing, dude, I have yeah. spent, Chris I Ryan. have had at Chris run. I've had access, direct access to them via the podcast. They're in my ears speaking to me and you and everyone mm -hmm. that's listening. But I feel like in that sense, the brain interprets it as they're literally speaking to you a conversation. Yeah. Your brain just interprets it like this person is talking. They don't, it doesn't really get it. Sorry, brain. It doesn't really get <laughs> that it's a virtual recording. Mm -hmm. It's hearing a conversation that it thinks it's a part of. And I remember, I remember Mickey when Mickey, I, I remember Mickey pre podcast and I know Mickey post podcast because I showed him a couple podcasts and he was like no I'm not going that sounds stupid you know <laughs> <laughs> and then he started listening he listened to a couple Rogans and then he's real big on um, your mom's house yeah and Michaela is too I remember I just remember seeing like the the glint in his eye or whatever like the little shine like oh yeah you're you're you got upgraded or something you know I don't know I remember noticing a difference in how he looked after he had listened, started listening to these podcasts. And I feel like that's, that's probably what happened to me as well. I remember the very first podcast I listened to with Rogan. I have no idea how I found it or what the hell. It was with Steven Ranella. It's like episode 600 or something. And I was outside at mom and dad's, I don't even fucking know, doing something outside. And I just had it playing. And I was like, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. What are they talking about? Hunting? I'm going to go look at my hunting stuff. And then it just... I've consumed so much. Yeah, and, and there's just something for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't think everybody knows that. They're like, oh, I don't want to listen to Rogan. Like, then don't. There's yeah. thousands and thousands of more. Like, mm -hmm. isn't podcast? There's millions, two million podcasts or something. It, I can't remember. What, it's like there's obviously more podcasts than there's ever been, but it's like the podcast market was more saturated than some other market. I don't remember what it was, but yeah, it's like that's insane. Yeah. So there's something out there for you. If mm -hmm. it's murder mystery, it's out there. If it's uh, Dan Carlin hardcore yeah. history, mm -hmm. it's out there. If it's Rogan bullshit and which look through Rogan's guest, you're gonna find somebody. Oh yeah. And and usually if it's a good enough guest, yeah, you know, I guess depending on if it's like political or not, but like <clears throat> usually they're pretty timeless. Yeah. The information stays, right. and it's not like oh, it's not up, it's two years old. It's not mm -hmm. gonna be any good. Like. <laughs> The information's still there, oh, yeah. you know. The conversation is still there. It's, oh, yeah. it's worth a listen. And yeah, if you have any free time, if, yeah, if, I don't know. Like, does everybody entertain themselves when they wash dishes, or do they just wash dishes in silence? <laughs> you know, 
Well, what did people used to do? They thought, what did they, they, they just shut off like a robot? I, or think, just like, I think that's great. It looks like a meditation. Like meditation. Shut your brain just off. Just gives your brain a time to. I blare the TV behind me with something. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. But it's a podcast. It's probably a lecture a, or a podcast. It's a YMH, maybe a Pat McAfee. It's a podcast. Yeah. You could say that, that that's also a meditation because like YMH, they're literally just, bull- they're doing what we're doing right now. You know, how often, I don't listen to it often. How often do they go into some detailed like get your life together this is no deep, deep psychology never but they they're so damn funny that it's like Stress i want I, I want to watch yeah. just to see what they're laughing about you know yeah. i'll just hear tom bust up and it's like i need to see <laughs> right and kind of like you're saying of uh their real conversations like i laugh yeah. as if he cracked a joke in mick's living room or whatever yeah. you know it's like yeah. that's how i laugh not like at a movie La- i don't know i think there's like different kinds of laugh Definitely. where it's like that's a punchline, and then you laugh mm-hmm. versus this. It's just a conversation. Mm-hmm. So the the natural rise of like, where are they taking this conversation? Right. And then they take it there, and then it, it you know gets to the point of laughter, and they they add on to it. It's all improv. It's like it's the difference between scripted comedy and improv. Mm-hmm. It's like why is improv so much funnier? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's nobody knows what's coming it's next. So unexpected. It's completely and every step is unexpected. But you can write. A movie that's mm-hmm. very unexpected, all the classic comedies and stuff, but mm-hmm. nothing will get you like the unexpected. No. Just, and, and that's what a conversation is. It's an unbroken trail, mm-hmm. I guess, versus like a movie that's like now a different scene, mm-hmm. you know, different setup, different characters or whatever. A podcast is so linear that, I, I mean, some of the hardest I've ever laughed is at a podcast, oh, you know, no two doubt. bears. No doubt so good so yeah i would agree on i need to listen to more honestly anymore i've like been trying to find music and take a music route and like try to think more Mm -hmm. but then i get into the music and Mm -hmm. then it's like i don't know it's not working out very well so i need to jump back into podcasts but there's so many of them i know there's so many of them and some of them are so long mom was trying to get me she's like you need to do your podcast (sighs) they're not they don't need to be so long no I like them. I like them long. It's like a challenge. You know, it's like a challenge. Even with you, it's like a challenge to go for two or three hours and to keep it, you know, relevant. Kind of back of my mind, I'm thinking like someone might listen to this. <laughs> you know, I always think that. And then it's like, I heard you on the podcast. Yeah. What the? You listen? It's amazing how many people listen. I don't know. It I'm it's, always surprised. Yeah, it's cool. I, I love, I probably get at least. <laughs> These are big numbers. I <laughs> usually get like two text messages per podcast yeah. of just different people mm-hmm. that some that just touch them in a different way. When I had uh, Dave Lopez and uh, Eric Young, uh, Eric, uh, can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember how to say your name, last name. Eric, when I had Eric and Dave on, I, the, I don't even, on Yongo, and tempt it. I believe it's on Yongo. Yongo. Anyway, O N O G O N O Y O A G. I don't know. Yongo. Yeah, Blair Fagan messaged me because Eric was his coach oh, at nice. the time. And he's nice. like, man, I really enjoy listening to you guys talk. And I was like, that's so cool. Yeah. Jake, um, the one of the Jakes I used to work with at Red Oak, mm-hmm. messaged me about Azmuth. He goes, Azmuth sounded like the coolest guy ever. He <laughs> yeah, he is. Ever. He actually is. But it was kind of, it's just those little tiny messages that come out like, that was really good. Like, man, that feels so good. And it's worth it. Yeah, he he still has one of the funniest scenes in all of Parks and Rec. Oh yeah, <laughs> that wild animal. Look at that. <laughs> it is a nature amazing. Yeah, dude. that's a great great line. Yeah, great series. Good guy, still doing good work. Yeah, doing but, the Lord's work. He is. Amen. But what I was gonna say is, is that I, I meditate. I'm 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 like an average meditator. I lo- I would. My goal is 20 minutes a day every day. Just 20 minutes a day every day. My reality is 20 minutes every two or three days. You know, that's not, it's not terrible, but mm-hmm. it's not where I want to be. Mm-hmm. But what I have noticed of lately is that I meditate way better. Way, I meditate way deeper in silence and just natural sound versus I get on the computer, I type in ambient, atmospheric, Hurts 628. Blah, blah, I totally blah, blah. agree. I like that. I like sometimes I do like the music. I don't like it. If it's if I'm really emotional, I like to put the music on because it kind of helps me amplify the emotions that kind of work through them. 
But if it's just meditation, just go silent and I can go so much deeper. I can get, I can get to that place of no thinking or I can just dial it in on a thought, but, um, goes back to the podcasts and listening to music. We live in a society of constant, constant, uh, stimulation all the fucking time. And one of the most eye opening things that happened to me in 2020 was when I got COVID it, co- it corresponded with like two days before COVID really ramped up on me when the symptoms really showed mm-hmm. up. My pixel bit the dust, could not get a new phone. And suddenly I'm on death's doorstep with COVID. So two weeks of that and I didn't have any phone and it was unbelievable. Once I came out of the fog of COVID and I, I was driving around still, I couldn't really go anywhere. I was driving just to get out of the house and the thoughts that I had, They were like original thoughts. I was back to original thoughts. I wasn't thinking like, even now I'm thinking of what I'm going to post after Mm -hmm. this. I'm going to think about my Snapchat. I'm going to go to the gym tonight. I'm going to say some motivational and the lift weights. And um, (laughs) you get into that like mind mindset of social media mindset or like a digital mindset. And when I didn't have a phone, it was unbelievable. The, the, string of thoughts I could have that would be unbroken. Mm -hmm. I watched more movies than I've ever watched because I wasn't like going for my phone. I just sit there and be like, Hey, put another one on. Um, that was really good. I really, I was so dialed into the characters and Mm. through the movie. I really enjoyed that movie rather than being like back to the movie or whatever, picking up my phone, looking at one, one post is a broken thought. It's a bro. It's a shattered thought and you return. I feel like the the more and the sooner I put stimuli in, like the noisier it is. <laughs> Speaking of noisy, <laughs> like the noisier Stimulate. it is um, in in the quiet times, in the times yeah. that is supposed to be non stimuli, driving or whatever. I I drive in silence. People say I'm a serial killer. I might be, but I drive in silence most of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, coming down to from Pittsburgh is like just a silent highway, mm-hmm. and I've noticed that when I wake up and like first thing is computer, you know, second thing is TV. Cause I have to get the sound through the TV, but it's my, also my third monitor. Mm-hmm. So like monitor up coffee, music, or like, you know, usually YouTube mm-hmm. finding just noise and then going on and then the doing the phone and then like, all right, time to take a leak. You go to the bathroom and you're looking at your phone as you're taking a leak. Like, okay, it, it's just nonstop. Yeah. And the more I do that, the more my quiet times are just like, I, yeah, it's like you can't put words together. You mm-hmm. can't string a thought, not necessarily words, but you can't string a thought together, no. just bouncing around. And it's, I don't know if it's foggy or what, but um, I think that's that's <laughs> the crucial point of meditation to yes. break past that. Yes. And, uh, you know, have that time of meditation to deal with all that noise, mm-hmm. you know, and like settle it down after 10, 20 minutes or whatever, versus just living with it. <laughs> and then your an- anxiety is up. And yeah, no know. wonder you're fucking freaking out mm-hmm. all the time. No wonder you're on Xanax. It's yeah. like you are overstimulated. Yeah. You, your dopamine, your, your, your neurons are fried with dopamine. Yeah, you overdosed on dopamine. <laughs> yeah, and then that's why you're depressed. Because you're over you flooded. Get- yeah, there's no spikes. I agree. Have you heard of dopamine fasting? Yeah, I have. Man, it's, that was Do a very... Do you practice those? I have looked, and they really blew my mind. <clears throat> I have not done them, but it's like makes total sense. What, what are they essentially? Like, what What are they? That consistent? dopamine is a, it's an addictive chemical. No, right? I mean, like, what would you do to fast? Well, so, I mean, dopamine, everything... The things that you don't know give you dopamine, give you dopamine. You mm-hmm. know, just... The feeling of your phone is probably some dopamine. And then, of Definitely. course, the the bright, pretty screen. There, so there's a dopamine hit. And you got a notification. There's a big one, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, okay, so we're talking about being overstimulated. So that's just continual flow. Instead of natural spikes, what would a natural spike be? Hunter-gatherer dopamine. I say good food if you had, like, a really healthy. Probably that, it, you find good berries. Yeah, you know, you right. see that color. That's a nice, you know, dopamine yeah, you hit. You see, like, a good mate good mate yeah there you go there's a good but otherwise it's pretty like bland right you know you're i don't know smashing rocks together or something (laughs) um so dopamine fasting would be like an obvious one is get off your phone right um i don't remember all of them but you know just 
most of it was like screens just because mm-hmm. screens are freaking beautiful to the eye they yeah, make you they sure. pull you in they make you want to do more i think of like just camping because mm-hmm. then you're just away from it and uh the more you're off your phone the more you know something transforms we always have the kind of tradition of like day one rest mm-hmm. we aren't doing shit mm-hmm. keeping the fire going you can nap as much as you want no judgment you know yeah. you can walk whatever day one is always rest and then day two you can do camp camp right. stuff or whatever but it's like something happens in that second day third day range and then of course the longer you go the stronger it gets of mm-hmm. like it, it's a real reset when you go camping this year yeah we do it is truly a reset i always notice that when i'm out there in elk city where we camp that the first day, like we said, the the no judgment or whatever, <laughs> my mind is so loud. It is so loud out there in the middle of nowhere. Even if I don't have my phone, sometimes I've had my phone. There's not much service or whatever, but you're Snapchat and your fire or whatever. Yeah. And then sometimes I've I put it in the truck or whatever to just I'll come back to it. But my mind is so loud. Hey, you got this to do. Hey, you need to read that book. Have you checked your phone lately? Have you checked your phone lately. Wonder what everyone's doing. <laughs> By the second day, it's still there, but it's quieted down a lot. Yeah. By the third day, it's really quiet. <laughs> it's there. It it might be gone by the third mm-hmm. day. Fourth day, it's definitely gone. You've entered a new realm of thinking. You, you've emptied out all the junk, I guess, all the stimulus. So now you've like hit baseline, and then <laughs> if you if you leave on the fourth day and you return to society, it's it's mind boggling. It jolts you when you, like, I, I stop at a Walmart right there in uh, Independence and get a drink or something. And I, like, Parsons? going. Uh, no, in Independence. Oh, oh, camping. Yeah. yeah. From camping. And I remember every time I've ever done that and I walk in, it, it's almost too much. The sounds like, mm. ding, 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 ding. Well, and that everybody's in their own lane mm-hmm. type, like. I don't know. Everybody's just on autopilot and you yeah. can see that now mm-hmm. coming from a deranged woods, you know, just yeah. from no contact. Well, you're, you're reset. You're waking up with the sun going to bed or going, you're resting when it's dark. Mm-hmm. Then the, the most noise that you've heard are, are some birds in the wind, you know, crackling like, of a fire, crackling of a fire, your, your own voice. Maybe yeah. usually I don't talk at yeah. all. Yeah. You yeah know? Like days. I don't sil- talk. Yeah. Literal silence. You can think about things. I usually I've taken a journal and just like write and write and write and write. Just just you know, no holds barred. Just write what the hell ever comes to your mind. So you're like, you're instead of taking in information, you're actually downloading information, which is clearing out space and mm-hmm. clutter in your head. So you kind of get to a point where it's like you are literally blank. Yeah, you're you're yeah, you're just out there, and then you enter this chaos world. You have chaos world world isn't that what the video game was called chaos island chaos island you have like crazy fluorescent lights and you have all this like bright colors of of clothing and food there's people that are very strange especially in walmart and you just it's just it is very overwhelming to re-enter um but then you like it like back to my covid story of having no phone well like a week after that i got the iphone 12 and dude you talk about I was addicted to the phone before I went through the roof. Like I am still struggling with it as far as I need to back off this mm-hmm. thing. This thing is an alien that's trying to get inside me to burst out of my chest. Yeah. And I'm just like, hop in, yeah, right. let's do it. But I just look back during that time and you can't, you kind of talk yourself out of it. You know, you think, uh, I could never live a life like that. I could never live a life where, I unplug so much that, you know, I don't have a phone. I don't have a social media account. Like, I don't know. One of the fallacies that I believe is that someday my social media will generate money for me. It's going to be my job. So I better keep, if I don't post, it can never happen. Is it worth it? How much has it already taken? Mm -hmm. How much is it a given? But you always think to yourself, like, could I just go off? Could I just live life like this? Could I just have like a flip phone and maybe check my email every once in a while and make money and exist? I always talk myself out of it. I, I don't say, know. Why, why do you have to go down to a flip phone? Why not just have a smartphone? You could. Still exist. You know, monitor your internet time, you know, like you use your internet time intentionally, mm-hmm. assuming you don't work from the internet and then live your life simply. 
I don't know. Is that just bills? You just got to pay for the damn thing. Right. I mean, you just have to pay to exist. Yeah. How much do you have to pay? I just find it. I find it interesting <laughs> that all these guys or people in Silicon Valley or all these tech people who create shit don't use the shit. They develop this stuff. They make a crazy amount of money and then they become the weirdest off grid motherfuckers of all time. They don't have any social media accounts. You ever listen to Jaron? I can't think of his last name. Fascinating dude. Wrote the book, 10 Reasons Why to Delete Your Social Media Accounts, about how much they control you, which is 100%. Of course, we know that. The TikTok algorithm is insanely strong and revealing. <laughs> but he doesn't have anything. But he comes from the tech world. He created a bunch of virtual reality software or whatever. He plays instruments. He has no TV, no computer in his house. He and his kids like garden and they do hard stuff, hard, rea hard reality stuff. But he has the cheat codes on money. But he has the cheat codes on money. That, that's where it always changes. I have infinite amount of money or I have enough money to where I can exist outside of the mm -hmm. matrix. But I made the money off getting all of you addicted. Hmm. That, essentially, that's what Zuckerberg did. I'm going to create this platform. I don't know if that's how it started, but he created a platform that's insanely addictive. It's a slot machine in your pocket. And now he has the cheat codes on the money, yet the cheat, the money, the infinite amount of money comes from enslaving everyone that uses the program. You say enslaving. I mean, I could see how he could spin it. I mean, you downloaded it on your phone. You made your own account. And that's, that would be a great monologue for the devil. If the devil's like, you made me just do this shit. You made me cheat on my whatever. You made me go to war. I didn't do anything. You did it. I just presented the. I was gonna say it's like I gave you the chainsaw right. to hack the guy's head off. Yeah. you're the guy. You're you're the one yeah. that hacked the guy's head off. It's yeah. like I gave you the tool, but then again, I mean, then I could you could almost blame it on a capitalist society of like if I didn't create a social network. Somebody else is going to create the social network that takes over. And obviously right. there's plenty of them out there at this point, but it's right. like, thank Tom for MySpace for erecting this idea of like this social platform. Social's yeah. not even a good word for it, but I guess there are people using it. So social's good enough mm -hmm. for the word to where you look at a flat screen that has information on it that other people put on there and then you get mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you comment yeah. rude things to your friends because oh, it's not to their face. Grandma, you shouldn't have posted that. I don't know. I feel, I mean, I don't love social media, but there, there's things out there. It's like even sugar. It's like, I don't love sugar because of what it does to me, but I love the taste of sugar. Mm -hmm. So I don't, do I love, what do I love about social? But there's also the poison along with social media. I don't know. Likes feel good, but at the same time, it's like, oh, the same six people liked the same post I posted before. Thanks, yeah. guy. Like, right. I don't know. The, I think the dopamine stops after. It's like, <laughs> these are the people keeping up with me, which I love dearly, but also it's like, well, I don't know. It's not like, uh, is being worshipped mm. a good thing, you know? I, w I don't know. It seems like a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Why Why me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's kind of what it is, I guess, is self worship. Here, here's here's how great I am. Follow me. <laughs> Literally, that's the verbiage. Follow me. Follow me for more investing mm. tips. Follow me for more workout tips. Follow me. followers. That's where the money is. Mm -hmm. Whether they literally walk behind you and follow you, that could be a stalker or a creeper or something. So I don't know if he, <laughs> the money comes with that, but digital following mm -hmm. for sure in this day and age it's like it doesn't matter what it's for destroying ps5s or uh george clooney making an awesome movie or whatever whatever the case is get the followers and then the money will show up around you you know it seems mm -hmm. to be the equation seems to be definitely seems to be i think so i re during COVID. okay where do i start this covid the entire event of COVID to me was far more traumatic than what I initially thought of it being. I thought of it being just like, okay, we're good. We'll, we'll get through this, blah, blah, blah. But the longer we were in it, and I guess we're still in it, 
the more the more difficult it became to understand what was going on the more light that was shown on reality my reality of well this is false this is this is worthless this is your week here like it just is like the light turned on and all the covid light turned on all the cockroaches was like oh shit there's a lot of these cockroaches personally and now just recently i feel like i've i was spinning through space like the chicken gravity and it was just like <laughs> finally got hold of something of like god god what in the fuck got hold of something and just just recently within the past couple of months have started to be able to reconstruct reality in a way of making sense of like okay this all, all this crazy shit happened now i can proceed forward in to a future which i hope to obtain where was i going with all this it's a big idea oh yes social media and whatnot there was so much to me, and I think other people too, that's why everyone's quitting their jobs and like, I'm not fucking doing this shit anymore for $6 an hour or whatever. Like, I'm not going to play your games. I'm not going to continue to be a wage slave or whatever. So much of our reality was questioned and so much of it was like, what are we doing? Why am I overeating? Why am I not fit? Why have I not pursued this idea? Why have I not asked this girl to marry me? Why have I not, whatever. Why am I? Why am I overeating? Why am I procrastinating on this? Was it the time off? Probably. Probably part of it was being home. Literally, there's nothing to do. There's You're not going to get called into work because it's a lockdown. So it was almost in this sense of relaxation. It was almost a meditation. It's like a long-term meditation of, of a reflection of life. People are doing, they're cooking bread. They're doing the sourdough. You remember the whole sourdough thing? It was... There was things like that. People were cleaning their house because they were redoing their house because they thought, wow, I don't spend much time here. So I'm always at the fucking office. I'm going to make my house beautiful. I'm going to open this room up and do this. People were spending time with their significant others or their family or their friends or whatever. Now, not to say that there was a lot of bad too. Obviously, a lot of marriages went down the drain. A lot of uh, relationships exploded. But that's what I mean is it, it was like COVID initiated the pressure on everything. And if you had a shaky relationship, it was like crushed in. Yeah. If you had a good relationship, it was like, oh, okay, that was tough, but we're strong and we mm -hmm. made it through. Uh, for me personally, it was, you know, one of many lessons was the weight of body weight of, of, whoa, dude, you are not on the right track with this body weight stuff. You think you're healthy because you did a workout like three years ago and you did <laughs> kale shakes when you did Red Oak. Yeah. When was the last time you had a fucking kale shake? And that pressure just came crashing down and this reflective, this this rumination on where I am and what I'm doing was was so strong. It, w it, was, it was literally what Jordan Peterson, Peterson talks about is going into chaos. Like the entire world entered chaos at the same time when they said this is a pandemic with a world of warcraft or whatever said this is a pandemic <laughs> and uh i think a lot of good came out of it i think we'll, i think we'll see that good i think a lot of bad came out of it too <laughs> but that's the duality of reality i think yeah kind of what we were talking about before of like crazy things can happen now and it's just like ah, that's pretty crazy you know mm -hmm. like our, our crazy meters are off they're weight mm. they're they're uh desensitized to crazy because drop any news headline it's not going to blow my mind mm. john gruden kind of blew my mind but <laughs> they, i mean but it fits the storyline but it fits the storyline yeah. so yeah that, that makes sense like yeah. at this point I, I i was in defense of him until it's like oh there's seven years worth of emails because the the first argument i heard was like this email in 2011 like yeah. guys come on like Oh, and then there's, you know, 30,000 more over seven years. Like, oh, okay. Okay, do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't defend him after the longevity of it. But right. you got to think a, a one and done is forgivable. But whatever. I think uh, <laughs> Trevor made a good point of, like, you never looked at the guy and thought, like, what a, what a good guy that is. Like, kind of always was a scumbag, but that's mm -hmm. what you loved about him. Right. Of, like, this hard-nosed coach. 
But then again, good point. He's probably not the nicest guy right. <laughs> to where these emails shouldn't really surprise his, anybody. His doppelganger was Chucky, the did, killer doll. Did you see what he called uh, uh, Goodell? Uh-uh. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't want to say it on here because I don't want to get canceled, but it's pretty what, good. What did, they, what did he say? Uh, he called him a... Oh, what did he call him? Something uh, like a faggot anti-pussy, uh, anti-football pussy. <laughs> Like, what? What? He's not the only one, you know. What you just... Co- I don't know, but then you see Goodell, you know, put his foot down, like, release more emails until this guy f- is fired, you right, know, type of right. thing. I don't know. That's the story I heard, was that, it's like, release as many as it takes to get the, get him fired. Mm-hmm. But did you do you know why they even found these emails? Because there was, like, this trainer in the Washington football team that uh, is doing some like inside, I don't know if it's like inside trading or what it is, but mm-hmm. so this per- this uh, like trainer for the Washington football team is being like investigated by the FBI or something crazy. Wow. So they're going through everything, and then they're like, look at these emails from 2011 between the jo- FBI found them. Yeah, because uh, I know I don't know if he's under FBI. Like this one guy is in deep shit, Mm -hmm. but then the NFL runs its own investigation. So Mm -hmm. they're looking at all this stuff. So Goodell's, it was like 300,000 emails or something crazy. And so like look through these emails. And so they get to looking through these emails and they're like, Jesus, look at these John Gruden emails. So, Gruden's caught in like crossfire. Like, oh yeah, he is maybe a dirt bag for the (laughs) things he said, but also it's like, this wasn't even about him. This wow. is just emails they found investigating this Washington football team hmm. situation that nobody knows. It's like they're still investigating mm-hmm. to find out, but like it wasn't about John Gruden mm-hmm. until they found these emails. It was like, jeez. I mean, it's crazy. It is crazy. That that's unfortunate on one hand, but also like I really don't care. But I mean, I don't <sighs> give a shit. But. I get it. Yeah. You know, it, it was to the point of like, yeah, it happened. You slipped up. I don't know. Whatever. Like, I see it as it happened one time. Come on. Uh, 10 years ago now, 2011, you mm-hmm. know, 10 years ago it happened. I think we can move on. Mm-hmm. But then the longevity of it, seven years of mm-hmm. like, oh, there's more. And it, like, oh, that's just how this guy is. Right. And especially in today's climate, it's like, dude, yeah. there, Pro- there was no time. way. Yeah. There's no way. And they were talking about, you know, Mark Davis owns the Raiders. His Mm -hmm. dad, Al Davis, passed down. Was a scumbag. Well, loved John Gruden and Mm -hmm. Gruden's coach there before. So they're saying Mark Davis grew up with Gruden as like his hero. Mm -hmm. And then he just had to fire Gruden, like how emotional that must have been. Or, you know, like how how tough that must have been of like, you just fired. You brought him back for 10 years. Mm -hmm. This season's going great. You know, you guys are kicking ass and everything. And then um, you have to fire him because he's a racist asshole. That's, that's what Dad was saying. He's like, "What's Gruden gonna do now? Like, oh, he can't be an announcer." He took. A, he was taken off of the Ring of Honor at Tampa Bay. Which oh, he is, was. That's what I sent you. That article I sent you. He was on the Ring of Honor in Tampa Bay. He won a Super Bowl with. Yeah. Him. It was like, why? Are, oh, is he up there because he loves? Oh yeah, yeah. Black yeah. community, or is he up there because he won a fucking Super Bowl? Right. You know, like this. This isn't about. Oh, he's racist. Well, we better take him down. It's like, did you read any of the racist? He got fired. Comments? Oh yeah. Were they racist? Well, uh, he called. Uh, the, they keep naming this guy, and then I'm thinking, like, this poor black guy <laughs> is just living his life. Right. I don't know was if he, he a player. He was he was an administrator, I think, maybe oh, a coach yeah. or something. Right. I don't know. But he talked about um, his something about his lips looking like Michelin tires in the email. Oh, my God. Um, he talked about he gave shit to Goodell. Something about something about Pussy Goodell um, wanting the Rams head coach at the time. You would know him. Um, mm-hmm. Wanted he was trying to get him something about pressuring this Rams coach to draft Michael Sam, the mm-hmm. first gay player in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Something about trying to get queers in the NFL. Then he spoke against um, female 
referees. Yeah. It's like everything progressive he shit oh, on. Yeah, right. So it just does not look. It's not like a right. one thing. It's right. it's a con, I don't he know. He literally how took on the entire Hydra head. Like yeah, every, pretty much. Every, you, you pissed off every category. Yeah. You didn't all want all the L's, the G's, the B's, well, the T's, the Q's. The and pluses. then the big question is Carl Nassib yeah. or something like that. He's he's a hell of a defensive end. He's a great player. Openly gay. Uh-huh. He actually had a really awesome coming out video is like less than a minute. He's just like straight up about it. You know, I'm Carl Nassib. I just want to take this time. I'm gay. He just like, it's kind of weird, but I don't know. Like it's cool to hear. It was just, mm-hmm. and then, you know, that was years ago now. So he's like been openly gay in the NFL. Yeah. Of course, nobody cares right. on the Raiders. He's right. a baller. Like they oh, love yeah, him. Yeah. You know, nobody gives a shit. And so then all this shit comes out about Gruden mm. and it's like, do you are you homophobic or is it like were you just using that against Goodell maybe because mm-hmm. you you coach and actively get or you know like right and openly gay I should say because I'm sure he's not the only one in the NFL that's gay <laughs> but openly gay yeah. yes and um, so people were wondering like I wonder if Carl forgave him or talked to him or mm-hmm. maybe Carl convinced him like hey we can be cool too you know right. us dick lovers <laughs> oh my. you know yeah, I don't know right. yeah 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 I don't know but that's his own thing and yeah Gr- I don't Gruden won't ever have an NFL job again oh no. no I don't think he can do anything in the spotlight you know but that's that's what I hated about the Buccaneers taking down his name was just like yeah. he's not up there because right. he's a political activist. Mm-hmm. He won you a Super Bowl. That that he got fired. Isn't, isn't, isn't that just? Yeah, you know, isn't that almost revision, revisionist history to where it's kind like of, just erasing yeah. things of like tearing down sa- statues year? and shit. Yeah, Which I don't know. I got mixed feelings on that, but whatever. But same kind of concept is like let's erase this, pretend right. it never happened. Mm-hmm. When it's like. Dude, I don't. That's how it happens again. Yeah. Right? Well. Yeah. Right. Right. That's of course the ultimate argument. But it's like he, I don't know. Take take the Super Bowl away then. You know, like mm-hmm. take the Lombardi Trophy. He won that. Mm-hmm. So get rid of that. Throw it in the Tampa Bay Bay. <laughs> throw it in the Tampa Bay. Yeah. It's like I don't know. I find it very disrespectful. But then again, like he lost his job. That's mm-hmm. that's the. That's the right thing to do. Taking his name down mm-hmm. for a, I think it was a 2001 Super Bowl mm-hmm. or something. Like, bit, probably sun aged. It's been up there so long. Oh, for sure. Oh, now we're taking it down. What? Why? I do you uh, think it makes its way back up? It's gonna make its way back. No, up. no. It'll be written down in a book somewhere. John Gruden was the head coach, you know, or whatever. Right. Are you gonna X his face out of all the pictures? <laughs> what? How? What extent are you gonna take it to? Yeah. I just find it ridiculous that you take his name down when he was indeed the head coach to make it happen right and has been honored and respected this whole time mm-hmm. maybe you just look up there and you can think to your personal self oh john Gruden, i remember that piece of shit <laughs> you know what <laughs> right yeah whatever why oh, yeah he got taken down by emails or whatever like oh that, yeah that's right see, his, i mean his that, emails from 10 years ago that, came out that's the point i think you're trying to make is like he's so much more than just the emails like there's so much more to a person than just the ultimate no. that one slip up that they had and not that they shouldn't be punished but that's where the losing his 10 year yeah he just finished building a house in las vegas <laughs> neighbors oh. with Derek Carr, his oh, quarterback. Yeah. They were neighbors. Oh, wow. He just got his house done. Oh. He's not living in Vegas. Yeah. No, of course not. So. But but the sense of, like, I, he's so much more than this this email extravagance or whatever you want to call it, this phenomenon, whatever. But, like you said, he served his his sentence of losing his job yeah. and his reputation his is tarnished. dignity, yeah, reputation. So let, let it be. Yeah. Keep the other shit, like, leave it, leave it be. He, he just... He did that at the time. Unless you're going to go and literally cut out his face of every picture, mark out his name and everything. Yeah. Unless you're going to do that, that ring of honor should stay. Yeah. Because that, that's like the, the first domino. It's like, all right, take him out of everything. Right. Apparently. Yeah. If, you're gonna, if he's not going to ring of honor, he lost his honor. Which is actually fucking wild because it's take him out of every – remove him from history – because his values do not align with present day values. Right. right. That's fucking crazy. I mean, in a way, and of course the NFL is so political. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think most of the actual fans mm-hmm. just want to see good football. Absolutely. Of course, I don't want a racist coach in there. Yeah. But if he's a football genius, 
and works well with his players. Like his, you know, black players don't have a problem with him. Mm-hmm. He can contain it or bottle it. I don't give a fuck what he thinks. Well, like, can he much, coach a team? Yeah. Well, how much shit is talked behind closed doors between all people, all races, all genders? Right. We're just humans. Just talk shit, and it's just one of those things where I don't know if it's like stress relief or. You know, you got to do it behind closed doors because you'll get canceled. Mm -hmm. Just unfortunately, he did it on email, which is like totally permanent or whatever. But I don't know. I I don't advocate people to be racist or be No, I don't want it. But that's not why I watch the NFL. No, I don't give a fuck. I don't watch it for what you believe in or the gay player or whatever. That's why I've backed off watching the NFL so much because it has become so fucking political. Isn't that the whole... uh, um, Boycott the NFL group. Mm -hmm. Isn't that why all the fucking dads with sunglasses on Facebook? (laughs) Like, isn't that the, I ain't watching it because it's whatever. It is super. Jam it down your fucking I mean, I get it. Yeah, it is some freaking left wing stuff a lot of the time. But. Progressive. It. I don't know. It's like, I just want to watch football. I don't give a fuck about the gay pride Mm -hmm. halftime show or whatever. Like, good for you. That's great. That's a whole different subject. Mm Mm-hmm. That I just I just want to watch football, right. you know, just the game, just the game, just the athletes yeah. competing against the other athletes, the coaches, and what happens in between. Yeah. yeah, that's all I care about. So it's it just sucks when yeah, it's just rammed down your throat. Dude's losing his job over emails. He didn't even like say the n word or anything, mm-hmm. you know, or like if if there was an incident in the locker room where you know he. Choke slams a black guy or something like I get it. Yeah, that's right. not good. That right. that's but emails for being mean. Mm-hmm. Look at the guy. His eyebrows go down. Dude, like this. they're permanently permanent, per- pissed. Permanently pissed eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. I I just don't. I don't know. But I you have to look at it through the lens of today's climate, and then it's like, oh, I see. It makes sense. Right. It puts those missing pieces together of, of like, right. oh. That's why it happened versus that's just personally what I believe. And that's mm-hmm. not the reality of the way things are, you know, mm-hmm. type of thing. It's crazy. It is crazy. Crazy. It makes me think of Dana White. And he announced, he was saying, and he called out the NFL. He didn't say the NFL, but he called out the NFL. He's like, all these other sports organizations, you know, they're getting all, I don't know if he said progressive, but I, he would say, I'm pretty sure he said political. Like, they're getting yeah. so political. He goes, we're not about that here. We're about putting fighters together to have an excellent match. He goes, I don't bar anyone from not saying anything. They can pe- fighters can say whatever they want. I just want good fights. Racist, sexist, who gives a shit? I mean, I I I'm sh- I'm sure he doesn't want them to do that, and most of them like get it, like if I want to keep fighting, yeah, probably most of them are super that. respectful too. Though. Right. And they want the public behind them. They don't want to shit on the public, which they know. Right. If I say, yeah, you know, this. Just like being a good person. I was right? going to say, you'd like to think most of them are almost like the Khabib of like, he's a good dude, mm-hmm. seemingly. Justin Gahey type thing. I mean, just a nice guy. Yes. Racism's so fucking weird, but you know, it's like. That one is impossible to get behind. Some dude being racist? Yes. But I don't know. It, it's weird because. Um, like the the phrase, oh, he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. It's like, <laughs> right. does that mean you can be a little racist? Right. You know? And, and then there's like, oh, everybody's racist. S- systemic racism. You know, mm-hmm. it's whether you like it or not, you're racist for your your pre your prejudgments or whatever. Right. You know, the the you can't help it. It's your knee jerk reaction. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, unless you're white. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, but I think the thought that like a black person can't be racist. Come on. It's know. called reverse racism. It's just called racism. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's literally the definition of racism. Yeah. Which is, I don't, whatever. I don't know. I, I, I think, I think uh, you should be good to people. You know, I on, honestly God God given honest thought. I think that entities like the media, uh, project that shit way more than what it really yeah. is. I, ca- I come into contact with other races all the time, other white folk, and rarely, I'm talking point zero 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 one percent is there ever a racist interaction with, with me personally, yeah. you know, experience-wise. 
And I like to think that if you multiply that across the entire human race, it's going to be pretty fucking low. Did I tell you about that time in Austin with uh, Colby and I walking on the streets or we stabby type? No, well, there was that too, but we were walking and there was like a corner when this dude with a megaphone and like three or four other black guys, uh, using the megaphone, preaching to the streets. Mm -hmm. And Colby heard him before I did. He was like, let's get to the other side of the street. I was like, what? Why? And I kind of listened to him and like, you think that white man next to you is your friend? That is your oppressor. Like yelling about uh, the white devil walking among us. All this stuff. Oh my God. It was like, yeah, good move. Good thing we walked across the street because they were just, I mean, it was like, you can walk by and they're not going to shank you or anything. You don't think so at least, right. but it's like just straight to your face. There's white people, mm-hmm. you know, it's a good mix. We're in mm-hmm. Austin or whatever. So I guess more white people, but whatever, it's a b- busy city. There's, you're going to find everything there. Mm-hmm. And they were just beaming out the white devil and how, you know, the white is not your friend. You can't, and can't do that in reverse. That would not well, last like, long. That sounds really, really racist. It is know? racist. <laughs> it is racist. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's never, never heard that before. You know, I never, mm. I've heard the Christian crazy yeah. Bible thumping on this. Gays you're gonna going burn to in hell. fucking hell and yeah. all this. Never heard the white oppressor Does that on work? the corner. Does that ever work? I don't know. I don't think about. I don't the, want to burn in hell. I think about the Pitt State guys. Like, yeah. dude, you're ridiculed. Every you just piss off everybody. Like, it has to be how you get off. You uh, have to right. get off just, at. That's the attention. The, that the attention is so. I don't know, intense or something, you know, there's so much fuck you get off our campus going on, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then you see videos of it and it's like, oh, they can do that. I guess it's legal or whatever. And you can't touch them, blah, blah, blah. You know, cops have to get involved. It's the weirdest it shit. It just doesn't make sense. But they like, fucking love it. The outcome isn't that the efficiency isn't that good. Like how many, yeah. What's your turnover rate? The you know, turnover how many people is like, a, tell me more about Jesus bomb, after hearing bomb, you, bomb. you know, just totally rip into premarital sex or whatever. Yeah. Versus someone that's just like super nice to you and like invites you over and has dinner. And it's like, do you want to come to church? You're like, you're much more apt to be yeah. like, yeah, I guess so. If there's more people like I was you gonna say like, yeah, we're eating at church tomorrow or whatever. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, that sounds a lot more appealing. Mm-hmm. Then it kind of gets into the whole, like, now we're going to eat the blood of Christ, you know, and, and, and then it takes a turn for the war. <laughs> well, it just gets serious. I guess it just gets into the, the religious aspects of mm-hmm. it versus, I think we were talking about this in our cats chat the other day. It's like, what is a Christian? What's the definition of a Christian anymore anyway? Cause all it seems to me like that, that for some reason, TikTok. TikTok Christian, I got Christian TikTok for some reason. Like, not like the make fun of the Christian. No, TikTok, it's the actual. It's like serious, yeah. like, you know, Goliath hanging around and then it cuts to David in the corner. Something like that, which I kind of find cool, but I also don't like them because I'm like, I don't want these on my feed. But what's the definition because basically when i see those videos of like this is what a good christian is it's just to me it's just a good person mm. that's all i see is like don't hurt people mm-hmm. don't lie don't steal be nice you know work hard like all you're describing to me is like a bland good person of society so is the difference nothing... like that person would give credit to god whenever a non christian would give credit to something else or themselves you know it's like thank give, give credit to god dude that's, that's something i don't know if this is podcast worthy but something that like mom if she whatever we move a big stone for her, she's like thank god <laughs> and then my neighbor <laughs> lovely corky who i love so much yeah i'll like mow the lawn or whatever yeah. do some work for her. she's like thank you casey <laughs> and it's <laughs> thank it's nice to be thanked yeah. like Right. God didn't move the rock. Your son did right, type of right, thing. Right. It's like, I actually, that's a, like a legitimate thought was like, wow, that's like really nice to hear mm-hmm. a thank you mm-hmm. personalized to me mm-hmm. for doing the work. I don't know. Did, did you ever meet Alan Truong? T-R-U-O-N-G. Um, <clears throat> not really. Good dude. Not amazing. Really. Good, good, amazing person. Really love that guy. I love you, Alan. If you're listening, um, we met in 
Orange Coast College in, in philosophy or psych class. Okay, maybe remember. I definitely didn't meet him. Oh, Alan, yeah. Maybe we definitely did Asian didn't meet. cat from Cali. You probably Alan, met him. Briefly. Alan, if we met, I remember you. If we did not meet, I can't wait to meet you someday. Oh, you, you would love Alan. Um, we were talking about one time because that's because California, I was very, I was, that was probably the most Christian I ever was. I was like the tip top Christianity, maybe high school, high school. <laughs> yeah. Too. High school's up there. Yeah. It's definitely up there. But I remember talking to him and he, he made the point of like, when you uh, pray over your food, you're thanking God for the food. Like, why aren't you thanking the duck for giving his life oh, so yeah. that you could eat? Why aren't you thanking the cow that was slaughtered? You know, like, thank you for giving up, which is what the Native Americans the, the would do. The cooks that took the time out of their day to mm-hmm. prepare you. Which, I guess the argument to that is, like, you could, you could. You could do it all. Like, you could say, thank God for the food. Thank you f- for giving up your soul, your life, your sustenance for my sustenance. Thank you for your sacrifice of preparing all like well, you don't have to stop with just yeah, one you know right. or the other but it kind of goes along with your whole thing of giving god the glory and mm-hmm. and forgetting the oh, human I guess that, yeah that's where i was going giving the human that the, the, the actually performed the duty some other credit to some other thing uh yeah i guess the life force of the duck or you know it just not that uh, thanking God is like just evaporation, like it goes mm-hmm. nowhere, but mm-hmm. when somebody else could use it, but I'm sure it, somebody appreciates it. Uh, does God appreciate being appreciated? Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, I mean, he it, likes being worshiped, so probably. Yeah, he does. Bow down to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's God, so. He, he is God. He, it, whatever it is. He, all powerful. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that uh, that whole conversation stemmed from the TikTok. Not I don't know what a Christian is anymore because it's just like a good person. And like um, Christopher Hitchens, Christopher yeah, Christopher Hitchens, one time in one of his lect- lectures said, uh, "Religion is truth 1.0." It it was truth for mm. like the old age people of we're bashing each other's heads they in with stones. Yeah. yeah, we need a little bit of order. Yeah. Here's this religion. It's truth. Right, religion, myth, legend, all that, it's truth. Like like Jordan Peterson says. Rooted. Yes. Myth does not necessarily mean it's false. Mm-hmm. It has truth. It might not be physical truth, right. might not but there's truth in it. Right. And that's what religion provided the people of the past with this truth in order to get to where we are now. And then we have another truth, truth two point I guess, which would be like science and physical truth and empirical evidence. But the problem with that is that, unfortunately, it's left us with like a very huge gaping hole in our life and purpose because we it gets rendered down to you are a clump of cells that wants to blow his genetic code into another clump of cells so that more clumps of cells. And once you die, you're stardust and you go off into nothing. And while it might be true it's also not very hopeful and it doesn't it kind of renders your life purposelessness i like it (laughs) i prefer do you truly like it though i mean like okay i don't like it but i like it i would rather see the light than see the what fluorescent light you know Mm. like uh i don't want to be believing in an illusion i i like the fact i like the fact of we're star matter and shit like that versus like I don't know. Some dude died for your sins. How does that make any sense? What does that mean? I still sin, mm-hmm. but I'm forgiven. It's just, I don't know. I would rather believe in like factual truth rather than uh, faith. You know, I think that's a good place to start. That's what I always tell mom. You know, I, I, I tell mom. I tell myself, I tell Marty, like, I hope to God there's a heaven. I fucking hope so much. I do, dude. Like, if, if you told me, like, I get to choose this outcome, I'd be like, yes, heaven. Let's, let's make this happen. That sounds like a great place to go it's after we die. Because it's paradise? Because it's paradise. It kind of gives meaning to this life. It gives meaning to whatever comes after this life. It's a safe place. It's a it's a place where all my people I love will be. And you don't want to shred on the electric guitar with your brother in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll come to some concerts Demons. down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds fun. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to go back to heaven when I'm done. But what I 
kind of subscribe to is I will start with what I think is true. What I think is true is when you die, it's, it's game over. It's blackness for all eternity, just like before we were born. Pre-birth. Pre-birth. We return to pre-birth type crap. And uh, unfortunately, that's scary as hell. It does render my life meaningless scary. and pointless. Yeah, it just, it's, yeah, it scares me. Because it's like, no matter what I do, it's, not, it's like the Matrix where if I accomplish, if I can exit the simulation, I can live further past this life. It's no, no matter what you do, you conquer the world, Alexander the Great, you still go into pre-birth darkness. But if I start there, then I can work my way up into saying, well, it's all zero. It's all darkness. It's all nothing after this. Everything becomes to me. You're just playing the odds. Well, wait, let me, let me finish real quick. Everything to me becomes more beautiful. Everything to me becomes more valuable because it's like, this is it. This, this, is, this is the one time I get to know you as my brother, as a person in this life. That's it. And then it's darkness forever. I, I may never see you again after it's after the lights are shut off. Yeah. If there is a heaven and you're there and we high five or whatever and you get sent to hell because you're the rock star. <laughs> awesome. I mean, I will just be like, oh, my God. Thank God. Thank God. But I'm just pretending or yeah. I'm choosing to believe like, no, that's it. And for me, it renders everything more valuable, more meaningful. And I it it kind of frees me up to not take stuff so seriously. Like, yeah. Just, dude, it's it's good. No matter what. It'll be over. No matter what, this fucking ride ends. Yeah. Might as well just enjoy it as much as possible. So, I think part of that was going back to um, diving in too deep to where you're losing what we have right, right. here mm -hmm. because you are thinking of what lies in wait for you. The glories, I'm, I, I'm it, it's the ultimate... Uh, uh, Delayed gratification. I'm going to yes. delay this life exactly to even enjoy yes. things because I'm going to sacrifice everything to mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. my time and money and whatever else, and and I'm sure with that comes some reward at least something some right. kind of reward, yeah. but um, that I will be eternally rewarded mm -hmm. out of a promise because I have faith, you know, uh, after I die. Right which nobody knows factually what happens after you die. So I'll believe in this versus, yeah, it's like probably pre-birth is a good way to describe it. It seems reasonable, right? It seems reasonable. Yeah. Yes, it seems reasonable to where doesn't that make it so much, doesn't that make every uh, cup of water taste yeah. so much better, exactly. you know, type of right. thing. And, and you're gonna soak in every second that you are here. Mm -hmm. Cause when it's over, it's over for good. And mm -hmm. you know, you'll deal with that when it gets here type of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can do. Yeah. I, you hear that a lot from Christians. I hear that a lot from Christians of like, can't, I can't wait, can't wait to get there. And they always use this phrase, which pisses me off. It hasn't ever pissed me off till now. Cause I'm thinking about it. And it's like, it's going to be so good. You can't even imagine how good it's going to be. And uh, maybe that's true. Also, I can imagine this glass of wine and this ass that's right there mm -hmm. that I can partake, and it's going to be amazing. Maybe not more amazing than I can imagine, but it's right there, and it's like, it's 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 pleasure, it's joy, it's experience, it's actually living, it's mm -hmm. actually something there that you're going to receive and you're going to have an interaction with rather than, no, I'm going to wait till now. I mean, whatever you don't drink, that's fine. Whatever, whatever. But there are, there's a lot of events even in my life where I have foregone. And now I look back and I go that I like that fucking moment was stolen from me. Mm. You know, it was literally stolen from me yeah. because I thought if I don't do this, it's something, better, yeah. something better will right. come. And it's like, no, actually you just missed out on a, on a, uh, a moment you could have connected with the person, mm -hmm. had an experience with the person, opened yourself up, you know, connected souls. I don't fucking know. Eating the cake. Eating. I, my cake didn't get eaten. Should have eaten the cake. Should have eaten the cake. No going back. Yeah. There is no going back. Actually, <laughs> had a fire the other night. 
And uh, I was tiptoeing around the idea of time travel. And I was like, oh, my God, am I going to how deep am I going to go into this? You know, am I going to really play around with it? Am I going to take it seriously? Like, am I going to try to figure it out? I backed off that one. Hmm. I was like, I don't know. Probably a good move. It's one of those like conspiratory. It's like kind of conspiracy, kind of woo woo, kind of like, yeah, quantum physics. Maybe we can. There's like maybe some truth to it. But how deep do you want to go? But um, it, it is really amazing. I remember times in my life where I'd be like, um, I would sacrifice something happened two years ago or whatever. Yeah. It's like I would sacrifice the two years that have happened since then if I had a chance to go back. Mm. But I mean, how many times do you do that versus like the one go through that you get since mm -hmm. we don't get to go back? So it's like the rough draft is the, 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 final, draft. the final draft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the rough draft and the final draft is the same thing. Right. It's like, I wonder how many of those, like, man, I just, I have this huge regret here. I wish I would or would not have done this. Mm -hmm. If you went back and you know, like, would that, like, where, where would you be? Where would there be consequences that happened? Of course there would be, mm -hmm. you know, for the alternative decision, would catastrophe happen later down the road instead of like right there mm -hmm. type of thing. It's mm -hmm. like, it's all, that's almost like final destination shit. Like you didn't die here when you were supposed to. <laughs> So watch out over here type oh, of thing. Yeah. Right. Well, it, it, it kind of speaks on the, the whole idea of like, a, one, the simulation, but two, multiverse. Like a multiverse, it's like a multi-simulation verse. And, and how many different things could happen on the timeline. It's like, it's literally infinite, you know. B besides tiny little things like someone walks down the hallway or doesn't walk down the hallway or two people walk down the hallway right here outside of our door or that chaos uh, they chose to do you know uh, insanity brewing rather than chaos brewing so the <laughs> logos changed you know just all these tiny itty bitty little things and you could change it on every level just like a phone number or just like a string of numbers or like a password how many can you rearrange how many if you put this character here first and you can change all those however many times it's millions and millions and millions of times now taking every piece of stimuli, every piece of little tiny, every atom in our universe and put that in that some gargantuan, infinite, fucking huge number. Those all have different strings and timelines off of them, if, mm -hmm. if, if that's all true. Mm -hmm. And so you wonder if it's all happening at once, which is what some people say. Every timeline has happened and is happening and will happen. Circular, is that a circular timeline? It's like a, it's like a side by side timeline all the way forever up and down going somewhere. Maybe that's how I think of it. It's you know like instead of you laughing this way, you laugh that way, and instead of laughing, that's you got. That's how I mad. picture it. I mean, but I would, but every tiny little thing can be changed. Not just the big things. Not like you married so Kelsey, I didn't. Marry infinite Kelsey. universe, then, but doesn't that lead us to like it's still this point in time. You know, it's still the time that we are in going straight and then just, you know, each millisecond or oh, whatever yeah, measurement of universe that trails off. Right. You know, yeah. but it's still t 2021 or, right, you know, yeah. whatever you want to consider time is uh, conceptual. So whatever you want to conceive to understanding where we are in time versus time, like we're already dead in the future. But it's already happened yeah, type of thing right which is hard to conceive yes so i i don't know or you're just being born or yeah right or i'm being born right now yeah however so you know type of thing see this is why when i was around the fire i was like don't do it yeah don't don't do it i just i didn't have enough uh, mental energy to be <laughs> yeah. able to go down this yeah, path because time gets so squirrely it's it so squirrely you it's fun it. to think about it's fun than aliens I'll tell you that Funner than aliens. Aliens just don't get me off. Otho loves them. And uh, I, I'm glad he does. But it's like, they just don't get me off. You're just impatient? Are they real? Yes. Okay. Are they not real? No. Okay. Government saying shit doesn't uh, throw you for a loop. We don't know what this was. I mean, it's cool. It's like, it's interesting. Like, oh shit, you don't know what that was? But it's it's almost kind of like it's almost kind of how I feel about God. Like if God just wanted to wreck my life and like torture me the whole time, what the hell am I supposed to do? I can't do anything. So if aliens come down, there's the superior race, and they're gonna like wipe us all out. Like, 
Still, it'd be fascinating. <laughs> it would. It would be fascinating. I mean, I'd be blown away. I, I look at it almost not quite as. I think there's more likelihood that there's aliens than there is Bigfoot. But yeah, the alien sure. believers and the Bigfoot believers are like, like pretty close cousins. They hang out. Yes, which I don't like. Right. You know, it's like we can talk about aliens and put our notes together about aliens and whatever else. But also, at the end of the day, we've never seen or met an alien. You know, the general public hasn't. Yeah, it's one of those experience only and then you tell your experience and it's like well how do we mm-hmm. same with like a lot of the yeah, god exp- a lot of religious i won't say god a lot of religious experiences are like i'm not saying that didn't happen to you mm-hmm. but i can't be sure yeah dmt's uh i hear is a crazy animal so yeah it's like and you have it up here so yeah well it, it, it makes me think of what you said previously as far as that's real it's crazy yeah. i say dmt and the cops show up <laughs> Go, 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 get in there. They've said the word. No, it makes me think of what you said earlier as far as shit is so crazy that crazy shit doesn't change. Mm-hmm. That it doesn't even, like if aliens showed up tomorrow or the government's like, Biden's like, oh, yeah. you know, I just be like, whoa. Oh, holy shit, okay. What? This is our timeline. What? Okay. This is unprecedented. Let's watch uh, put Rick and Morty back on. <laughs> yeah, like I can't handle this. Yeah, I mean, that would be pre- that would be that would be pretty cool. wild, but it's on the same level. If Hillary like, didn't, it wouldn't be that wild. <laughs> if she didn't, if she did it, oh. it would be like, oh, okay, there's the lizard. <laughs> if anyone's queen. a fucking lizard queen, if anyone's an alien, it's fucking Mark Zuckerberg, bro. I mean, he is. Yeah, he just he literally is built different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The picture you shared, was that him, like, photoshopped? Was that, like, a real person? Which one? The one with the haircut, the old, the red hair haircut, and he had, like, remember. the freckles and shit. You said something like you could have his wealth, but you have to wear his haircut. That was not Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, who the hell is that? That was Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders. Oh. That was the guy that just fired John Gruden. The, those, that line of humans are is hideous. Oh, it's disgusting. Like, Mark Davis, or Al Davis was a hideous human. But he's made of money, and that's the haircut you get? <laughs> Pull him up. Pull him up. Show the crowd before we close down. <laughs> they need to see this man. My uh, look up his net worth real quick. Do Mark Davis net worth? <laughs> Five hundred million dollars. Wait, yeah, I mean, Our Mark Davis, business for yeah, American franchise football. owner. Five hundred okay. million, half a bill and sixteen and fifteen. So he just built a uh, two billion dollar stadium. So we're gonna assume a little more With than five hundred. Inflation, we'll, we'll double it. At least he yeah. just. And then here, this is what it looks like. And then the guy himself. <laughs> he's 66 years old. I thought he was younger than that. Social no. justice. Look On at social the, justice and player protests. No who gives a shit. <laughs> look at um, who wrote that. Yeah. Let's look at some images. Look at this guy. This is his haircut. He chooses to look like this. He has money. He can do any haircut he wants. That looks reasonable. That looks reasonable. That looks reasonable. Still hideous, but well, reasonable. It's the bangs. It's how he cuts his It's bangs. when he does the bangs back. Yeah. Which, I mean, as far as low maintenance, I've been bald before. Like, it's out of his face. Why does he choose to he do that? He still has hair, but it's out of his face. Like you, It's like a bad bowl cut. The utility I get. But at that point, just go bald or just do like a short guy haircut. I don't know. This one looks fine. This one, not so much. <laughs> looks like he's a happy guy. Well, he owns the Raiders, so. And he just had to fire his best friend. Well, what are you going to do, you know? Well, what are you going to do? You're Mark Davis. Oh, I was just wanting just to see him talk. There we go. Game on, Vegas. And welcome back. To the and and welcome back. back. <laughs> it's the most perfect. What a life that's been for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, I think I've told you before that uh, as a young kid, all the players that would come to the Raiders, uh, 
from the north. Sounds south, like an old dude. West, okay. So cool. what I want to say is, I, I said, yeah, that they're a hideous family or whatever. I'm just going to say, the picture you sent was a horrible picture because he doesn't look that bad. I mean, he looks different. You thought the picture I sent was... <laughs> but the picture you sent... So essentially, if you're if you're watching picture. this, um, I posed the question to our little group. Uh, w- would you take this guy's money if you had to rock that haircut? Um for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. So pose that question to yourself if you're watching. If you're listening, Google Mark Davis haircut and look at it. Would you take five hundred million? Yes. Uh, to have that haircut the rest of your life, a shit. you have to maintain the bangs. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I got five hundred million. Hard pass. I got five hundred million in the. Bank. And your wife can't even look at you because you're. <laughs> A hideous monster. I'll pay with for bangs. A you can't do anything. AI. No, you can't do anything. You, the deal is, you have to look like total garbage. But I get five hundred million. But you look like shit. <laughs> Most people that do. you're rolling around in your nice big truck, looking like shit. You have <laughs> these little bangs that up top. That guy's a black belt in jujitsu. Yeah, I mean, I would say no. What? Five hundred million. The rest of my life, I have to confront people. With that haircut, I, there's not much I wouldn't do for five hundred million dollars. And I dollars. wouldn't do that. I would do a one-time anything for five hundred million. Would you trade your dick in? Swap it out? Yeah. Do I get to see what I'm swapping with? Yeah, it just is gone. What? No dick? <laughs> no dick. No. <laughs> Why five hundred million? No. <laughs> there's gonna be a Buck Angel type of thing. <laughs> you know, Buck Angel is somebody no. Google Buck Angel. <laughs> I don't know if I can. Is it rated R? Because yeah. you're going to need a rated R picture what? of Buck Angel. <laughs> Here we Buck go. Angel naked. Just oh, jump in God. there. I mean, that's the point. You kind of got to see. Uh, what happened to him? Um, he decided. Oh, no. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> he wanted to have a vagina. So it's a gr- it's a muscular grown man what the f- I with can't a vagina. Show this. <laughs> So if you have to edit this out, yeah, definitely. Um, this isn't making it. But yeah, click on that. Yeah, one of those. God, why? He's ri- <laughs> how? How the fuck? Uh, used to be a chick. I'm pretty sure. How did he get? How did she get so? I'm so disturbed. I'm sure testosterone and um, a number it, of other. She cut off her tits. She uh, he what? It, this person is actually pretty strong. Muscular, Mu- very muscular man body, but he's getting fucked by dudes, and he is like legit a dude. Can you do that? I don't know. I just I don't want to look. Did at she? These. Did this person get the vagina inserted, or what? Did is that just like? Yeah, uh, Google it. Yeah, he, I don't know. I'm pretty. I was sure, hoping you would. I think know. he was on Rogan. Yeah, I came. I saw Book Angel at uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, is an American pornographic blah blah a motivational speaker a transsexual <laughs> man. So I don't know if that means transsexual man, meaning that it was a girl. She was a girl. The term I transsexual subject is a subset of transgender. Oh man. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. Um, anyway, it's a dude with a vagina. It's just, uh, it's just kind of weird. Like the brain doesn't interpret it very well. No, because no. he's this ripped dude. And he has a vagina. Buck Angel. It's actually a really good name. Buck um, he was married in San Francisco. Met his second wife. Whoa, whoa, whoa! In February 2021, Angel was a witness to Lady Gaga's dog walker being shot and two of Gaga's French bulldogs being stolen in oh Hollywood. Lord. What the hell? Happened recently. What in the world? Yeah, I don't know how we got on this guy, but uh, wow! I yeah, okay. It, I blame uh, if you want Mark to, Davis, bro. Maybe. Um, yeah, if you want to listen to him, he's on a couple podcasts. I'm okay. I want to say Rogan, but yeah, I'm okay. He got kind of a. Uh, Transgendery voice, like you can tell it's a transition voice. It's yeah. not quite a, like a full mm-hmm. male spectrum. Mm-hmm. There's like a little bit of a tinge of a, f- not a female even. It's like just it's a little feminine, K- kind of. I don't feminine. know. Feminine. See, yeah. I, I, he's got porn and all kinds of shit. I, I've thought a lot about this because it's such it's a big deal right now. Like it started with the bathrooms. Like I'm gonna go in this bathroom. I'm gonna use this bathroom, and people got all pissed off. 
And then it was, then they started getting into sports and then the transgender, like transgender is a, a new thing. Yeah. And I kept wondering, I think we've talked about this before too on the podcast. Uh, I think it's the bleeding over of the digital world into the physical world. Because in the digital world, like in ARC, there's guys that play as girls, there's girls that play as guys. It doesn't, doesn't fucking nobody, matter. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. And that's just a, a game that actually takes an avatar uh, uh, of a representation of a human, of a sapien body, of an ape body, right? But there's tons of games where you're not even a sapien. You're a fucking whatever. You Hedgehog know? or... Yeah, uh, he, yeah, exactly. He, a Spyro the Dragon yeah. or whatever, right? What gender is he? I don't fucking know. Could be a gender. So it's it's almost like in that world, you know, when they say like, you can be whatever you want to be. It's like, you really can. You can literally be a guy, a girl, a girl that's 20 feet tall. You can be a guy, girl. You can be a girl, guy. You can be a dog head, fucking alien tail. Like you can be inanimate object, you know, with a little personality, the brave little toaster. What What the hell is the toaster gender? What, how does it reproduce biologically, right? You know, like, so part of me thinks of this whole thing of like a tearing in the, the, the fabric of society and then the tearing of the collective conscious of, of humans themselves. In fact, the other day I went to the Galena track and I was walking uh, with the dogs and uh, I was thinking about the old saying, I think, I think uh, Elon's talked about, oh no, yeah. Uh, 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 Tyson, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson mm. has talked about the car being like a great invention to get from point A to point B. It also is a great invention to warm the planet. It's like one of the best ways to warm the planet. It's an un- unintended, mm-hmm. co- a, uh, unintended, un- unintended co- consequence. Unintended. Unintended consequence of this technology. We don't know the unintended consequences of, of tech like this, right? We're getting there. Back we, well, we're starting to find out some stuff. And But one of my thoughts was, as I was walking around this track, was what do you get when you have a, a limited uh, sapien, when you have a limited intelligence uh, that has access to a piece of technology that is limitless information and content you, you get a broken brain is you what you get. get what you fucking deserve. <laughs> you do. You literally get a bro. It breaks your brain. Like there can be a piece of tech. There can be a piece of technology that is so powerful. It will break you because it's too much. It's almost like the um, scene in uh, Indiana Jones. Like, don't look at the fucking Ark of the Covenant. It's too much. And then the Nazis look at it and they melt. That's what that's what that little fucking little device is there. It's like, don't use that. There is so much power. There is so much control. There is so much information that your little monkey brain that was meant to fuck, find food, fight off big predators, and walk across the desert to get to another jungle can't handle it. And we're starting to feel the effects of the entire identity of the human race dissolve in front of us and we can, and we don't know what is going on what way is up what way we're supposed to go and it's getting weird man i always loved uh chris ryan's rendition of like every civilization that has ever risen has fallen so why would we be any different yeah you know we're yeah we are the greatest civilization to ever rise but they've all fallen mm-hmm. so why would you think this one wouldn't right through natural disaster or through whatever the our case, own doing our own doing nukes whatever it's like i have no doubt maybe not my lifetime maybe not in 10 lifetimes but eventually mm-hmm. it'll all fall oh same with the romans they're like oh it'll never fall look at the rome it's so powerful and it's like well give it enough time yeah and now we talk about rome in the history books mm-hmm. and who knows what will be around by the time the next civilization has risen if anything like mm-hmm. That, that makes you, your life feel short. You know, it's like yeah. how little you will experience in yeah. the grand scheme of the lifetime of the humans. Oh, yeah. How little you get. So there was a podcast. I, was, I think it was a uh, Lex Friedman podcast. And, you know, Lex, he, he uh, interviews like very, 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 very intelligent people. But he asked, I don't remember if it was a scientist or a programmer or whatever, whoever it was. But he asked them like what what was the question? It was almost like, what would you, what do you think, uh, what, what would be your biggest question or like, what would your not regret, but like 
after you die? What would you what would you be wondering? And the guy said, like, how it all turns out. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, how what happens to the human race? Did we make it? Mm. Did we just blow ourselves up? Did we did we fizzle out like we don't get to know. Mm. We just like you said, we get to live this little portion. I'm actually sad. I know. And then we die. And it's like, what happened to him? What happened to us? Add that to whatever the picture perfect heaven that you go to that you get to replay. Oh, yeah. Like get sent back down, replay yeah. parts of your life. Yeah. Like uh, I would so love to do or, or do ultimate simulation, you know, uh-huh. like just run through simulations of how this would have happened had I done it on earth or something. I don't yeah. know. That seems like a horribly addicting drug. It seems like it's a harder drug than I your cell never, phones are. I'd never pull out. You'd never pull out. No. Um, but also that of, hey, do I get to know what happens to our species, what to, to the earth? Sapiens? What happened to Earth? You know, our solar system. What happened to? Well, I don't yeah. know. Uh, seeing the like, if and when we go extinct, like the last living human, you know, make a movie about him. I get to watch and <laughs> her, her or her. God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. I, I hope we make it for a long time, but also. I don't know. I hate to shit on the earth real bad, but also that's what we do really well. Then we upgrade. So if we like Wally it, if Mm -hmm. we shit on the earth so bad that Mm -hmm. we have to build ships, Mm -hmm. it's like, well, at least we are technologically advanced enough to save our species. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I I go back to like what you said. Every civilization that's ever risen has fallen of all life. 99% 99% is extinct. Yeah. Of all life that's ever existed, 99% is extinct. Why would be be any different? Though we are the only ones that, that I know of that can do this. And, and we have thumbs. <laughs> You've done so much for us. Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, can we transcend to the stars? Or can we upload our mind into a computer? Fuck, I don't know. Theoretically. Maybe, maybe. it's possible. That's where it seems like where it's headed. I, giraffes ain't fucking doing that. It's like, I wouldn't... Yeah. Stupid giraffes. giraffes. ain't doing shit eating off the tall leaves. Um, but they don't get ulcers. Oh, zebras don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> giraffes do get ulcers. It's a little known fact. <laughs> do they? No. Oh. I don't know. I doubt it. I think they have the same stress I as zebras I wrote my dissertation do. on giraffe ulcers. Man, giraffe fights. That's something that'll... You ever right. seen giraffes fight? Yes, I have. They break their necks on each other. It's like, it's like it's, one of those late night YouTube fights. Kind of like anticlimactic. Like this will be a war of. <laughs> it's almost like an RPG game where it's just mathematically yeah. programmed. Like, no, nah, you're going to win, dude. Yeah. There was a great, that makes me think of uh, <laughs> a video that the HPO guys, uh, Heartland Pride Outfitters guys showed me. And it was a elk fight in the middle of this park in Colorado. And this TV show did like a thing about it. And this fight was insane. Like bad. Where the uh, one elk ended up getting gouged. Like Jeez. gouged with these fucking horns. Like dead. Like this guy is dead. Um, and then the TV show like spun it to where. And he's okay. And dude, we were just crying laughing because dude, this guy's dead. Clearly not This okay. elk ain't making His guts are hanging yeah. out the side of his, you know, like. The wolves are going to eat There's this There's no coming back no, from No, but they, it wasn't even the same elk. Like, a year later, here's the same Oh, elk. my God. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that was... I uh, hate that sugar coat and that shit. Was a good, that was a good laugh. I miss you guys. I miss those guys. Man, I always thought... I'm not a parent, but I always thought... Like, if I was a parent, I don't know. As a kid, maybe. You, mm-hmm. you got to tell some lies. But also, like, mm-hmm. never lie to your kid. And, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, like, anybody that should be telling truth to the child God. that that's like your job yeah and then like of course we have our own problems but like mm-hmm. you're not your child's friend you're their parent yeah you know that's it's, a huge it's a different it's a different distinction a different yeah. relationship yeah, and each person in that you know it takes a village so it's mm-hmm. like it does take parents mm-hmm. it also takes friends mm-hmm. it also takes crazy uncles it also takes you know mm-hmm. whatever younger people that the yeah i don't know whatever the kid can learn to take care of also mm-hmm. you know like it does take a village but also don't lie to your kids i've always thought well i've not always thought but I, i've had the thought of you know um it's like for for a kid you have to, it takes a village, like you said, but for a kid, you have to have uh, almost different flavors of masculinity 
and different flavors of femininity. So it's like you can't just have this one influence, which is kind of what I think we had in a way of like this is what it's going to be like. Rather than you have a you have a grandpa or two that like they have their own ways of doing right. That. This is the tool grandpa. Yeah, why are you doing it that way? Right. You get a whole new explanation Uncles from a different have, point of view. Yeah. yeah, but they're all kind of like a different shade of masculinity in the sense of like here's all the men that you look up to to build yourself up. Of same with all like the femininity. Uh, there's there's women in the church. If you're part of a church that you look up to and they do this or they do that, or there's uh, people you look up to at the gym that you're part of or whatever, like communities that Mm -hmm. you're part of, whatever your tribe is, you have to have those different inputs so that you can kind of pick and choose and build yourself into whatever character that you're going to be in. Um, I think that's super important. And the more, you know, when you have kids, I don't have kids. I have nephew, a niece and nephew that kind of like are proxy kids Mm -hmm. in a way and kind of watching them from literally from birth to where they are now, like six or seven years old is, is Kyan's age. Um, I'm not with them like a parent would be, but I'm with them as an uncle or, uh, and an aunt. Um, and I've even seen that, you know, coming forth and seeing like, oh, he's, I, I see this influence on him. Like he's, mm-hmm. he's ingesting this influence, whether he wants to or not. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of see that start to play out. And like Preston said this about his boy, uh, Preston was saying that he could see the anxiety in his son and he, he recognized it as that's the same anxiety that's in me. And then he recognized that he could help him mm-hmm. because he's he's gone through it and learned how to address it, which is like unbelievable insight to have, you know, into another human. It's like, that's the same that's in me, Yeah. which you could blow that up across the entire world and be like, we're not related. We have no genetic material besides what, what is the same. That's the same. That's in me. I deal with that same thing. Yeah. That goes a long ways and should, should be an encouragement to help each other. And, um, not judge each other so harshly and be more encouraging and, and helpful towards other people. I, I, whether it's anxiety or dealing with stress or overworking or what the list goes on forever. It's like, yeah, I have that too. Don't worry. You're not alone. I, I like that feeling yeah. that I'm not alone. When people tell me that they have the same, actually Tyler was talking the other day about one of his problems. And I was like, in my mind, like I have that same problem. Thank God I'm not alone. Talk about byproducts of stuff. It's like, yes, this fucking uh, progressive wave is kind of insufferable in a lot of ways. But in one way that it is kind of cool is I do feel very much like if I'm going somewhere and I'm like overly lazy, I haven't showered in three days or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like I can actually rock this Mm -hmm. because, hey, it's supposed to be like all love, accept everybody type of thing. So Mm -hmm. if I do that, then I expect to get that back. Right. You know, to where it's lowered my, I don't know, like judgment of myself or something to where it's like, who who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, who like you're fine. Just come on in or whatever. You know, it's just. Uh, yeah, like you said, like a much more welcoming uh, brotherhood, mm-hmm. fam- familial type of like, hey, aren't like I have my own shit, you have your own shit. Mm-hmm. For this small interaction, let's just treat each other well, mm. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The progressive movement, while yeah, like you said, like a lot of it, most of it is insufferable and just like, what is going on? <laughs> there, there still is good. Yeah, there's still good there's parts good of it. coming from it. Sure, there's still good coming from it, but. Just like the the conservative, it's like conservative ideologies that just totally just get ransacked and thrown out altogether. It's like, whoa, there's some good shit in there yeah. too. Like, hang on, why are we just throwing everything out? Why mm. are we just dissolving everything? Why aren't we like picking through and going like, that's total dog shit? But we can all agree on this. This is pretty good, <laughs> yeah. right? This yeah. is you know financial stability. That's pretty good. I think we're getting there. Acceptance of of individual. That's it's, pretty good. It's not right? the way I wish, but. I think it's getting better, and I it's like I do want the uh, unwelcome to feel welcome. Sure, you know it's like that's how you get fucking mass murderers and stuff. Yeah. My theory, like that's definitely one way to give do them it. a hug. Yeah. Come on, 
Well, it's like life is hard for everybody. Yeah. No matter how much money you have or like prestige, like it's still tough. And at the end of the day, we're all dead. Some bully's going to pour milk on the, <laughs> this kid's head who has a shotgun with 10 shells in his room or something. You know, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm pr- kids are tough. It's like you, you kids can't, are you tough. can't ask why. Kids are tough. There is no why. Like a, an adult, you, you should be able to reason with and like, why right. did you do this heinous thing? Like, right. well, because of this. And then there's a reason. Right. Kid is just like, I don't get to use this yet. It's yeah. just, right. it's thing. Well, yeah. And with a kid, well, with, with adult and a kid, we don't really take into consideration like past generations epigenetics and if you want to get into the spiritual realm of like have you heard of the sins uh sins of the father's past you gotta pay for them uh not necessarily well sort of yeah it's actually like an actual psychological paper it's fringe psychological spiritual type stuff but in the sense of you know if your great 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 grandpa struggled with this thing or made a pact with a fucking witch or something (laughs) like that just gets passed down yeah. and you struggle with that and a lot of times what they'll say is that that shows up as our family gets anus cancer or whatever <laughs> shouldn't have used don't that. curse us <laughs> like that I shouldn't have used that no <laughs> uh you know but there's like certain families that deal with certain illnesses or certain just like um oh man who was it dude um this is a weird one so susan's mom like the her real mom um flower it was a fucking flower's name uh, i can't remember her name her mom's real name it was like a flower like a rose or mm-hmm. I, cannot, I can't remember um she busted out her two front teeth when she was a kid susan busted out her two front teeth when she was a kid keely just last year bust fell down the steps busted out her two front teeth like what is that hmm. is that genetically programmed to like i'm ditzy is that just coincidence could be coincidence is that a a demon that's like kick her teeth out you know i don't know but it's a fascinating subject as far as whatever it is if it's epigenetics because your your decisions right now far enough down the line will affect your offspring if you consume a shitload of alcohol you're altering your genetics to your offspring i think the same can be said about behavior if you work out and you change your body, that gets passed down in some form. You know, I don't know what it is, but the same can be said about internal things, spiritual things. Did you say that thing you, you needed to say, or did you not? That gets passed down. Did you overcome the big demon of your life, the darkness, the, the shadow of your life? Did you overcome that? Whatever it is, you know, did you stand up to it? Did you fight the good fight every day or did you give in? That gets passed down. I'd say it's arguable, but I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm um, peppering it up quite a bit. <laughs> but that's how I am. I really like. I like the mythological yeah. aspect of things. I like to really personify things, just because that's how you can see them. Yeah. If you call it, I'm struggling with this. If I can personify, it's like, oh, I can attack it, or I can deal with it. You know. If you you picture porn as like a fucking anaconda, and it's like, ah, oh, okay, I can get, I can change that, I can fight this if that's what you struggle with, or overeating, it's just like a big gluttonous hog. It's like, oh, I can <laughs> fight that or whatever. You know, I think the imagination is a tool that is underutilized nowadays, and it's unbelievably powerful. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what it is, but it seems like some crazy, off planet, different dimensional gift that's been given to the apes i don't even really know how to use it you seem tired i just got i had to pee for an hour oh my an hour and a half i thought i really need to pee (laughs) (laughs) you can always go but i know we're here now (laughs) well what do you think of the of my muscles. It's a nice place. I think the fan would be a good move. Yeah, I need a fan. I, I really wasn't feeling it until like probably like I don't know half an hour ago. It and would just could be, be the nice pee. for some air to be moving. It's just stale. It's just very stiff. Still, I mean, I, yeah, I was fine with it yeah. until it actually like it's now starting to get warm. <laughs> but we've been blabbering this whole time. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's a great spot. I don't know how much you're, are you going to put up those spikes on the walls or whatever and uh, block they're, them. They're out. all on the door right now. Oh. But there is a little bit of an echo. I'm going to see if it does come through or not. I feel like I hear it. Like you said, it's trial one. And, yeah. you know, 
I might just like it cover out. the walls and, and even if there was just like 10 on that wall, yeah. 10 on that, it would just help with the, cause I think it is bouncing a little bit, but no, it's a nice setup. You got this window all blocked off and mm-hmm. dude, I, I, from outside these windows, they must be brand new cause they look amazing. They yeah. Look so nice from the outside. Awesome. Maybe a little thought of 10, 20, but it's fine. Uh, yeah. It's like, Rest dang, in peace. I wish we had those windows there yeah, for the whole time we were there. Funding. Anyway. But yeah. Um, Pretty cool. I still like the doorknob. If you're ever here, check out the doorknob. It's pretty wicked. The digital doorknob. The the keypad doorknob. Not not the old school one below that keypad I guess does nothing. Keypad number to get into my podcast is 420666. Star. 42666. Star. star. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks for having me on. Of course. I always uh, love talking to you, podcast or not, you know? I say, we, I mean, most of it's not even recorded. No. And then no. all of a sudden we kind of like make a day and just record it. Right. The same, it would be around a fire. Literally, there or, would be no difference if yeah. there was no, po- Would, no Wouldn't be wearing or, headphones. Yeah. Might interrupt each other a little more. Right. Might, might do it over some drinks or something. But yeah. really, the conversation mm-hmm. is... Just whatever's next, yeah. type of thing. Yeah, that, that's what I, I told you this one time. But it was like I was, um, I think I was like looking at your social media or maybe like re-listening to one of our podcasts, and it was just like I felt so uh, like blessed. I hate that fucking word. But <laughs> I felt so blessed or so lucky that like I have infinite access to you, but other people just have to like get what they can get. And it's like, dude, I grew up with that guy. I know more about that dude than any of you. I've spent more time as it goes on longer and longer, you know, we mm, drift. Yeah, right. But I've spent more time with that guy during the moments of most transformation, childhood or whatever. Yeah. It was just like, it just felt so cool. It was just like, I can text this guy right now and he'll text me back. It makes me think of uh, like Chris Farley's brother. Yeah. Like Chris Farley, his brother had so much access to uh, like yeah. somebody that all he gets what he put out right and everybody says he was way funnier off the camera mm-hmm. like come on yeah. we aren't even getting the best part and it's like yeah. i don't know i miss chris farley but anyway uh it means a lot thank you it's very sweet <laughs> yeah you're welcome <laughs> thanks for being my brother uh i didn't have much of a say in it uh, well i requested you i put your name in a hat like that one i want that one i want that one all right well You'll come back on soon. I'm sure you will. I'd like to have another Anytime. triple triple podcast. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, Corey Ball's on the list. Maybe get an Uber out of here or something. Yeah, we'll do it like on a Saturday or Friday and just like walk over and tear up the bars afterwards yeah, or something, something like that. That'd that be would cool. be cool. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Of course. Appreciate it. All right, all you beautiful people out there, thank you for listening. I think this is episode 69. Hell pretty yeah. Sh- pretty sure. 59 or 69. Freaking better be. Round okay. up. Yeah, we'll make it 69. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks for listening. Really excited about the new studio. I'm excited about my new mindset. Um, not not just with podcasting, but with life in general. Um, I might do like a solo podcast and kind of go over. Uh, Caleb Clark the other day messaged me and just said something about he was uh, interested in kind of hearing about the last few months of my life, working on Killers of the Flower Moon going through tearing my pec and having it in, and surgery on that and different uh, events during COVID and lockdown. I mean, there, as all of us, there's a lot of stuff that's happened. So maybe I'll do a little solo, like a debriefing of what the hell's going on and uh, what, what things are coming down the pipeline. Because uh, there seems to be a, a lot of hope, a lot of light, and a lot of awesomeness coming, coming our way. The best is yet to come. So like I said, studio is awesome. Really excited about uh, where we are. Really excited about who's coming on. I got a good list of people. Um, they make me nervous. They make me nervous to ask them to come on, which I think is a good sign because it's going to push me as a host and uh, as a conversationalist, but it's also going to give you guys some awesome content to listen to and, and uh, awesome people to meet. So once again, thanks for listening. I love all you people. Have a great week. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Oh,